Yeah. Yeah. The most I told me follow him. I say that I was wicked, but I followed him. I never thought that I would know the truth until he opened up my eyes and told me follow him. Wow. The most I told me follow him. I say that I was wicked, but I followed him. I never thought that I would know the truth until he opened up my eyes and told me follow him. Wow. The day that I woke up. I was looking in the mirror like, what's up with me? Cause I heard the truth before, guess I was tarrying. And tears fell down my face as I was pondering. See, I knew I needed to change. I was in the congregation with other dead men walking. And I passed two church views. Now this is a dream that I'm talking. And there was two books on these pews. I picked them up and kept walking. It was raining. It was pouring. It was cloudy. It was dark and through the forest. For some reason, I just kept looking back. There was a person in the distance following me on my path. But I kept on going and going and moving fast and faster. And the people with me vanished. It was only me. The most I told me, follow him. I said that I was wicked, but I followed him. I never thought that I would know the truth until he opened up my eyes and told me, follow him. Wow. The most I told me, follow him. I said that I was wicked, but I followed him. I never thought that I would know the truth until he opened up my eyes and told me, follow him. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show thee wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Then I was contemplating what the dream should mean And I figured out the books were my two ministries I got this music and preaching Commandments I'm keeping So on the path that I'm walking I'm being followed by demons And I think back to the dream I passed those pews for a reason I played piano in church Thought that was good, it was evil Cause they don't teach as it's written They brainwash us with religion They tell you faith over everything And grace has no limit I've seen the visions of the Lord That's only half the bottle Cause when Christ judge you with them laws No his orders a gavel Truth that sprang from the earth and his glory will unravel He showed his mercy to me Quick in my spirit oh, the, the most I told me follow him I said that I was wicked But I followed him I never thought that I would know The truth until He opened up my eyes And told me follow him Wow The most I told me follow him I said that I was wicked But I followed him I never thought that I would know until he opened up my eyes and told me follow him Whoa. Therefore saying we have this ministry As we have received mercy we faint not But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty Not walking in craftiness Nor handling the word of God deceitfully But by manifestation of the truth Condemning ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God But if our gospel be hid It is hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them.
Shabbat Shalom, what up, y'all? Good Tuesday, Shalom, Shalom. Man, hopefully I like the little pre-show, man. Let's do that to give time, people time to come in here, man. Some good music there. You know what I mean? Rocking that original. Rocking that good original, man. You know what I mean? Up here, relax. Man, had a rough little day, but you know what? The most hot brought seen us through another day, you guys. You know what I mean? Shalom to everybody. You know what I mean? Definitely, man. What up, what up, Worm of Solomon? What up with you, brother? Man, today, man, it's just like it says, you know what I mean? We're going to be having some testimonies today. A uh, few people uh, want to tap in and, uh, you know, spread, they share their testimony, uh, tell their story. Uh, you know what I mean? And also, uh, hopefully, uh, we can get Wayne's sister, Wayne Daniel's sister in here on the live. Uh, to let us know what's going on with the update with Wayne. Uh, so uh, just waiting for her to come in right now. I'm going to uh, share the link again. Uh, so uh, if you want to come on and share your testimony, uh, and uh, you'll be able to do so. So let me get that on here real quick again. Hopefully y'all been having a good day, though. Y'all cool out there? Pretty sure it never... It never gets, it never is a dull day as a targeting individual, empowered individual. It's never a dull day. It's always something going on, right? But yeah, hopefully, uh, let's see who else is in here today. Much respect, Phenomenal Mommy. April, what up, April? C Dub. Let's see who else is in here. Thought I seen my homie in here earlier. Black Funnel, Con, Con. Shalom to you, sir. 
Much peace and blessings, peace and blessings. Broken Matrix TV. What up, brother? Powerful's in here. All right, definitely, man. We're going to go up. We're going to go up today. Uh, we got some things we're going to be talking about. But, you know, uh, appreciate appreciate the uh, much of the love uh, on the last video, on the last live stream, man. Hopefully that was edifying for y'all that watched it. You know what I mean? I went back and watched it myself and it was it was pretty it was a pretty deep live. You know what I mean? You know, uh, definitely uh, touch a lot of bases on different things uh, like that. So. Well, uh, if you don't know how to come into the live, um, what you do is you just click the link and then you just bring it up on your uh, Internet browser and then you'll be backstage and then I'll be able to bring you on uh, like that. You see, we got one person backstage. Let's see who this is real quick. All right, we got we got April. April Hawthorne coming on. So I'm going to add her to the stream real quick. Shalom, shalom. What's up, April? Shalom, G-Rock. Shalom. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I'm blessed. I'm blessed to see another day. You know, it's rough out here for us, but we made it through. How are you? I'm okay. I'm a little nervous. I've never, ever um, called in. Um, I've been wanting to call into New Breed Show, but I've never even, I've never done this before. Um, so I'm a little nervous, but um, happy to be on the show. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely happy to have you here too. And uh, there's no need to be nervous or nothing like that. You're definitely going to be, your testimony will help somebody. You know what I mean? It's going through something similar and me as well, you know, being able to listen to your story, your testimony and uh, and seeing what you're going through. Yeah. Well, my testimony is huge. And I want I want to say I truly believe that, um, you know, when people say, well, how long have you been targeted? I really think it starts from birth. And I don't think um, there's any other way to put it, I think we're all targeted from birth. And I think at just some point in our lives, it goes overt, really mm -hmm. overt, but I don't think it's something right. that just happens. Um, because a lot of the experiences that I've had when it went overt, I think back to like my young teenage years, and a lot of that same stuff was happening just on a much smaller scale. But um, it's been happening, I feel like, forever um but i think i triggered something either with the most high or just what i was doing and then all of a sudden it went overt like very overt um i wasn't willing mm. to sell my soul in any kind of way to the devil um to make a lot of money and I had right. to make that decision. And when I made that decision, that's when it became very, very overt. Um, so Definitely. what happened? Yeah. So something happened yesterday. Um, I remember you, you said that somebody ran up on you with a gun. And I, when I heard that, I was hurt. But I thought to myself, mm -hmm. well, my life has never been, um, you know, it's, it's been a no-touch policy but yesterday um i take the bus right now to g rock i don't have a car um in the okay. picture this is a picture of me like before like the over targeting so it's a nice picture of me but i don't have the blonde hair anymore but i don't even know why i added that but it's just a good picture of me so i put it up there but um yeah you're you're fine you're actually doing you're doing great you're fine well, thank you um so basically i ride the bus and i don't know I mean, I'm in Oakland, California. The bus drivers, um, they're involved in it, in the targeting. Um, for sure, I, for sure. I could always tell when it's happening. So I got on the bus yesterday and um, I heard, I think they call it direct conversation. So they know, you know, my life is for the most high now and they make fun of me about it. So they'll usually have people on the bus playing Kirk Franklin. Really, I don't even listen to mm. Kirk Franklin anymore or just doing things to make fun of me. So it was like this dope fiend. And he was talking to the bus driver, like really loud, like screaming. And this is a busy bus on a busy street. 
in Oakland. So I go sit towards the back and I'm hearing this man like just 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 being a buffoon, just talking about God. But it wasn't sincere. And I knew it was just like anytime I hear people talking about religious stuff around me, it's like targeting. So he's like, yeah, God will change your life. But then then the and he was just saying a bunch of stuff like that and i'm like okay yeah he's a perp so then they started talking about like sex and conceiving kids and i'm like where is they going with this or whatever so they just talking then he goes back and starts talking about god and all of a sudden this is the morning time i'm coming from um dropping my son off on the bus at school so i'm coming back by myself and um all of a the sudden they're just laughing and key, key, key. And then all of a sudden she slows the bus down and just pulls over and she doesn't mm. say anything. So mind you, bus drivers are known to do stuff like this sometimes. I mean, it's in the gang stalking handbook. Sometimes they'll pretend they have to stop for five or 10 minutes to catch up with their route, but it's really just to hold the TI up. And that's right, happened right. before. That's happened before a few times. But so this lady, she I don't hear the bus breaking down. There's no sign of that. But she just pulls over and she's sitting there for a good five minutes. And the man is like, yeah, well, you know, if people got something to do, you know, they just better take their time today. Like like it was funny. And I'm thinking in my head, like, speak for yourself. Like people actually do have stuff to do. Like he thought it was funny. So I'm already thinking in my head, like this bus ain't really broke down like they're playing. So I'm like, what's going on with the bus? There's no way they could have saw my lips moving. But I was like, what's going on with the bus? And mm-hmm. she's like, Oh, it's broke down. Now, normally when a bus breaks down, it's a big to do. She got to pull it over. Everybody knows, but it wasn't this way. And then the man, he, he pers- and I already don't like him because I know he's a perp. He proceeds to say, well, you know, if you got somewhere to be, you could always get on the next bus. So I'm like, sir, I'm not talking to you because sure. I wasn't, I wasn't talking to you. I called him, sir. It's not like I said, you know, B-A-N or like, I'm not. I didn't say it like this. I just said, sir, I'm not talking to you. He couldn't have known it was me who said it because there were so many people on the bus. But for some reason, this man jumps up and walks straight up to me and flexes on me, calling me all kind of bees, all kind of, um, you know, derogatory things like he's running up on me. So I pull my knife out. And I back up two feet away. I'm like, I'm like, bro, I swear to God, if you step to me like this, you know, I'm going to slice your motherfucking face off of your neck. And I'm just saying that's what I said to him. Sorry for cussing. But he ran up as a man. So I backed up with my knife. And I guess he didn't expect that because of how I looked. And I was ready to kill him if he proceeded to. um, Like he was trying to intimidate me or something like just because I told him I'm not talking to him and I'm already known he's a gang stalker. So he ran up on me like he was going to flex on me. So I pulled Mm -hmm. my knife out. and I said what I said. So then he run. He I don't really know what happened because I kind of blanked out, but he ran to the front of the bus. And um, he got off and he went right to a specific place. But I'm, I say that so so while he's outside, everybody's on the bus still kind of like, damn, she just pulled a knife on cuz or whatever. He got off the bus. I'm thinking he's going to leave. And he's like, bitch, get off the bus. Like he's trying to mm. fight me as a woman or something. It's crazy. And the bus. So I start getting mad and I look at the bus driver. I'm like, is your bus even broke down? I was like, and why are you talking to him? Do you know him or something? And then she's mm-hmm. like, and mind you, this man ran up on me as a woman, but this woman didn't call the police until I asked her, is your bus really broke down? Like, is this, is this real? Is this a psyop? Why are you talking to this dope fiend? Like y'all are on the same level. She said, right. Oh, 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 you pulled a knife on me. Mind you, G rock, my knife been back in my hoodie pocket. Uh, I'm uh-huh. talking to this woman. So that hurt me so bad. So I'm like, I'm like, and she started calling the police talking about you pulled a knife on me. I'm like, ma'am, I would never do that. Why did it take you to call the po- why didn't you why didn't you intervene when this man was running up on me like that right exactly. and he's calling the police so next thing you know this man then went to the specific place that they pulled over and pulled a brick pulled a brick out g rock to match my knife meanwhile i'm just a woman 
I'm just a woman, but you got to do all that. He went, it's like they knew the, and I think this is a playoff of the Freemasons in the brick. I don't really know, but he got a brick and he ran back on the bus and he said, bitch, I'll, I'll kill you. I will kill you. And Whoa. like, the brick on me. so you know what I did? I just stood there and I just started praying in my head because I wasn't going to run because he wasn't going to hit me in the back of my head with that brick. And I'm just I'm just standing there like in shock. It's grown men on the bus, big men that could have intervened. Nobody fuck, nobody intervened or nothing, though. Nobody intervened. He could have he could have just, you know, killed me with that brick like he had it and he was right there. So I'm I'm just standing there and I'm just standing there. I'm like, well, if he going, I got my knife. I'm like, mm. if he going to do it, I'm looking out. He going to do it right in my face. And I'm looking at the brick. I'm looking right at the brick and I'm looking at him like if it's my time to go, I said it in my head, the most high, then it's my time to go. I'm not running from shit. So right, I'm just right. standing there. I'm just standing there and he got this brick and he keep flexing the brick like he want me to flinch or A run, brick. but I'm not going to run so you could give me a dishonorable death and throw that shit at the back of my head. So right. I'm just standing there the whole time. I, I promise you I felt no fear because I feel like his targets were not scared of death. We're scared of hell. So I'm just sitting there. I'm like, it, but but another thing I said, I, I thought at the same time is I'm going to watch where he swing this brick. And if he don't knock me out, I'm going to use this knife on him. Mm. And I don't feel like I would have been in the wrong. Exactly. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so that's I why, you know, it's very it's... important. Go ahead. <laughs> Go oh, ahead. no, I want to hear what you got to say, because I actually want your uh, advice. I was just going to add to it real quick. You're good, so... but... <clears throat> I'm just going to add to something real quick. I was just saying that's why it's very important that you know your self-defense laws in your state. You know what I mean? Because what they try to do, what they really trying to do is get us, you know, slow killers, but they also trying to get us locked up. So knowing your self-defense oh, yeah. laws in your state, you know, stand your ground, oh, yeah. uh, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go, you, in California, you out here, it's soft out here. It's very soft out here. And I, I don't know the the. It, it's a lot of men that ain't really men in California. Um, I'm glad I'm raising my sons very differently. They're nothing like these, you know, and that my son was even attacked, but that's another story for another day. But let's just say right. he won, he won and they were surprised, but um, I'm going to learn that. I'm also going to invest in a mace gun because if I had a mace, gun, I just Not took him on the spot. I, um, I want to say um, a good a good channel to watch is uh, Active Self Protection, um, active and, self and Active Self Protection. I watched that, and he gives you he gives you good ideas on how to defend yourself in, in like really critical situations. Just like the, so we have similar situations, you know. Basically, our lives yeah. uh, are threat threatened. He threatened our lives, but yeah. they want to do it in a way to make it look like it's our fault. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just like she called the police and straight up lied and said, I pulled a knife on her when I was just asking her, is her bus really even broke down? Because I exactly. honestly, I would bet my life on it that it wasn't. It was a psyop. So that yeah. man could have killed me with that brick, though. And that was the first time um, somebody's came and like did something like that to me. And I was just, you know, I was thanking God that um, he had his hand on me in that situation. In the whole situation, I I didn't fear it. Um, I just was standing there like, well, what else can I do? Definitely. He's gonna throw the brick in at me. I mean, we were right next to each other, and and it just made me think like he's a whole b i t c h because because you didn't know I had this knife on me. You thought you was just gonna do what you did, mm -hmm. and then I had an equalizer, so you felt. You're such yep. you're such you're such a wimp. You felt like you had to go get a brick and equalize me. Yeah, you had that force multiplier on you. That's what it's called. That's what I watch. Uh, that's why I watch active self protection. It's called force multiplier. I'm gonna Straight watch. I'm gonna subscribe today. Um, it, yeah, it, it, definitely. What is it called? It um. Um, I'll have uh, one of the moderators. It's called active self protection. If somebody could pull that channel up and put it in a in a chat, I appreciate it. Yeah, uh, but this it's called is active self-protection. Go ahead. Active self -protection. Yeah, put that in the chat, please, y'all. But yeah, For this sure. is just like a day in the life. Like, you know, some days it's worse, but that that was, you know, what happened.
And Man, that, you made the right decision because if you would have had it flew off the handle, you see how she was trying to lean towards you to get you locked up. Yeah, that's and, how I knew they were in cahoots. Right. And it's all him. And it's all but the good thing too, um, is it was all on camera. But also what I've been thinking too for myself, uh, we're gonna have to probably start carrying body cameras, having body cameras on us. Uh, because agree. not because we scared of these people and all that like that. But just the fact that if we have to go to court from hurting one of these people, if we need to protect ourselves, yep. it won't get flipped back on us. You know what I mean? Exactly. That's all they try to do. It's just it's just nonstop with the, you know, when I was working, they would just I worked at a right. garden. Center. They would just troll the uh, troll the parking lot all day with um, with the license plates and the occultic um symbolisms on the cars like mm -hmm. them little round the little round things on the back on a body uh, license plate the little symbols yeah like decal, well, little we, decals six, yeah six. well this is what i experienced with the vehicle um my I, my ex is a freemason and i truly believe that all of this is based um i i don't think they're the only ones but i i think they have a big to do with it so i get a lot of freemason symbols i get the number 33 on a lot of the cars, 666, um, 66, 69, um, they mimic the angel um, sequences, 444, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I get 13s, yeah. um, or they'll just straight up paint a big ass eye on a car and say, uh, what do they say, just transition, um, and they'll paint the eye of Horus on the car, or I call myself White Tiger, mm -hmm. so they they dressed up a whole Tesla as a white tiger. I kid you not, and parked it wow. in the parking lot of my job. Like this is, this is like the, right. the stuff. Or they'll just put blasphemous things on cars, like Saved by the Blood, and then they'll have a Muslim dude driving the Uber, and then I'll ask him about it, and he won't know about it. And I'm like, yeah, I've seen this car at the Marshalls parking lot. So yeah, you're one of them. I believe a lot of the Uber and Lyft drivers. Um, they're in on it, so yeah, yeah. Like at this, it, mostly at this point, it's either it's targets or it's gang stalkers. Like everybody's pretty much compromised at this point. Like to me, to me, my experience when I'm going through. So, uh, but yeah, investing in that body camera and uh, getting some, you know, some spiritual fitness, uh, being prepared for those type of situations, it would definitely help you in the future. As well, you know, we already know the most high with us, so we don't have that type of fear like others. No, I don't have. Want, I felt no fear when it happened. I didn't feel anything like to be honest. Me too. Dude pulled that strap out. Like he he had it in yeah. his armpit. So so it was more or less like a like if I reacted, it would be on me. So then he yeah. can shoot and exactly. he can shoot and kill me. You feel me? Because he did wasn't actually holding it in his hand. He was holding yeah. it in his armpit. Yeah, sneaky. you know what I mean. It's some weird, yeah. But I knew it was a threat there. But yeah, definitely. Was that uh, the first time your life was, um, like you know how they do it, you know, sneakily, and they. But was that the first time that it was overt like that for you? Um, I when I was with the honey pot, they had they had somebody try to run up in the house, like a like a like it was a home invasion. Yeah, and I had oh, hurried yeah. up. Yeah, I had mm -hmm. hurried up and closed the door real quick and locked it on his face. And she was oh. like, "Would you? You?" She was like, "Would you try to play Captain Saberho? You think you saved somebody?" That's why I kind of yeah. started getting hints about her. Like, man, something wrong about this woman, you know? But oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll be telling my story all the time. I want to hear y'all stories. You know what I mean? Uh, but I definitely want to bring you back on later and finish this uh, conversation to give you some more. You know what I think about your situation. Uh, but uh, I just seen that we had uh, Wayne Daniels' sister just came in. Oh, uh, let's so get. I want to get. I want to get her on here and uh, let's get the story, the backdrop of what's going on with Wayne, and then uh, possibly bring you on later if that's cool. Oh, for sure. Um, and uh, shalom to everybody. Um, in the live stream, I've never done this. How do I get out of here though? I'm gonna keep listening. Uh, though. Oh, uh, just a little leave. Will I be back to the um? Yeah, you'll go back to the uh. Yeah. All right, brother. Put, it was so hey, nice speaking to you. Shalom, much love. Keep staying strong. Keep staying strong. We're gonna we're gonna make it through this. Shalom, brother. Sure. We'll speak again soon. All right, one. All right. All right. So uh, let me see. I'm gonna put the uh, click up the link up for uh. For Rail Woods, if she's still in there.
Um, let me see. Uh, let me put this up real quick. All you do is click the link and then go to your browser. And then I'll bring you in on the. Uh, you basically just click the link and then I'll bring you in on the uh, show. But uh, man, if y'all can see, man, that's crazy. Like you know, and that's being done to a to a woman, man. I mean, that's how cowardly. That's how cowardly these people are, bro. That's that's crazy, man. That's the uncalled for. Like all that extra. Come on, fam. That's it's just weird. And you know. And we on here to get to the solutions. We don't just keep talking about it, filming people and all that. Let's get to the solutions. Body cameras. You need to be able to run a take back in court. You know what I mean? If something was to happen, you're protecting yourself. You need to be able to run a take back in court or, or for different reasons. It ain't because you're scary. You know what I mean? It's a lot of stuff going on with this program. And, you know, they try and get people locked up. They trying to slow kill people and all, all this extra. You feel me? Let me see. Let me bring uh, I'll bring well, real woods on here. In one moment. Hey. Hey, what's up? What's up? <laughs> so long. Out. Glad you glad you made it. Glad you made it. <laughs> I am not computer savvy at all. Yeah, I know a lot of people aren't. You know, what I mean, hopefully it wasn't that difficult for you. It was. <laughs> Oh, okay. I appreciate you working hard. You know, definitely just to give us the update on what's going on with Wayne Daniels uh, and just your particular situation. And if there's anything else that we can do as a targeted individual community for you and for the family and for his children, you know what I mean? You got the floor. Um, I don't know. What do you, what do you want me to... <laughs> I'm bad at well, this. So what do you want me to... Well, just, just whatever's on your mind, you know, just, you know... Whatever's okay. on your mind, it's about with Wayne, what how, you know, take the floor. Okay. You're good. No Wayne's story. You know, Wayne was well, he wasn't adopted, but we were adopted. He's got, from my understanding, it's supposed to be 10 of us, but I know for a fact that is my brother Mark. We grew up together. Me and Mark were adopted together. Then we got sister Felicia. She commented a little bit when Wayne had passed away. She was commenting a little bit up there <laughs> and stuff. And I know everybody thought that we were just like fake people, but we're not. Um Actually, I haven't spoke to Wayne's dad since like last week. I know they were saying they had to get up with his daughter in order to cremate him. So his my sister, Felicia, she contacted me last night and said that he already um, was cremated and stuff. He, he hadn't contacted me. I think his dad's kind of going through a little thing. He kind of like fell back a little bit. So if y'all have spoken to his dad before, I know you have before, G-Rock. Yeah, I did. So like kind of keep up with him a little bit because it's like, you know, it's kind of hard. And so, oh, um, so yeah, I found Wayne in 2010. It's amazing. I brought okay. him from New York to Greenville. And what you need? I'm at work, y'all. So y'all gotta excuse me. <laughs> what you need? Yeah, one casino. One casino. You want two Lucy's, three Lucy's? Okay, but yeah. So I met him. I brought him. Uh oh, I think I went blank. Did I go blank? No, you good. You good. Okay, I can see you. Okay, yeah. So I met him. I brought him back from New York. Um, he stayed with me for a little while. We visited our mom Lily. I don't know how close you guys all were with him <laughs> and stuff, but our mom Lily actually lives in Fayetteville and stuff, but she wasn't able to get out. She wasn't able to get out for his cremation and stuff because she's in a home because they try to say that she was a little, you know, psycho psychiatric. Mm -hmm. Um right. As far as the targeting, I never heard of it before until Wayne actually came to live with me last year. So he was like, yes, sis, I'm being um, targeted. I'm like, well, what's that, bro? I never heard of it before. So he was telling me how he felt like um, he knew a little bit too much. And the knowledge that he knew mm. made him you know, a targeted individual. He was like, well, sis, you know, you can look it up and see if you're targeted and stuff. I'm like, yeah, bro, I, I feel like that because, you know, my son said something the other day. He was like, well, mom, I wonder why people are trying to live in outer space. Why are people trying to go to outer space? I said, well, son, because they know that something bad is about to happen here. So they're trying mm -hmm. to find a different way to survive in outer space. I said, but, you know, won't you Google it, you know, dig deeper? He was like, no, mom, I don't think I want to know too much because what if I learn too much and they try to kill me? 
my son's 13 years old. What is he, you know what I'm saying? Wow, and that's just out of wow. the blue. That's just out of the blue. So I'm like, yeah, you're right. And as far as like religion wise, I don't really have a religion. I believe in God and I believe that there is a son of God. Now, I don't believe that he's this white picture that everybody's painting for us. I really don't because the, the real people, the true people are people of bronze. He had skin of bronze, hair of wool. He had hair like us. And these right, pictures that right. they came for, blue eye, blue, you know, I ain't no racist. Yeah. I'm not racist. So you, by you, far, but, that's a start. You know, that's a start right there, though. That's you know a start. Saying, like, you got to think about it. You know, the only way a, a white person's skin going to be bronze is they stand in the sun all day for about three hours. You know what I'm saying? So, right. Mm -hmm. you, you're, on the, you're on the right track. You're on the right track. <laughs> Yeah, so you, like, gotta, you gotta question this stuff because you can't believe everything somebody tell you now. Exactly, exactly. You start digging deep, you gotta know I, what you're facing. I got, I got a question. So I tried to get in contact with Wayne, uh, Wayne's father. I talked to him. I was like, man, you gotta set up a GoFundMe because I'm mm -hmm. not putting it in my, I'm not putting it in my name because I ain't got to have nobody thinking I'm trying to collect money up for him and. And they, you know, it had my name in there in it like that. So I told him to uh to set up a GoFundMe. He never got back to me. You right. know, and and we, you know, we all was trying to send him money, you know, I mean, to legitimately, you know, give him money for right. Wayne. And nobody nobody well, got in touch with me. To figure out because I was like, all these people that you know would support Wayne before before Wayne passed away, where are all these people at now? And like I know people had questions like, well, where was his family at? But like I told you. His sister, his siblings, we didn't we didn't meet each other until 2010. And then we got separated again for a whole lot of years. And then we just like met each other back last year. I, that was the first time I seen my brother since I had like three kids. And now I got seven. So you can imagine how many years ago that was. Yeah. yeah, but yeah I asked his, dad, his dad said that people were backing out on him about getting the money and stuff. But, you know, him and his dad had a lot of problems too. So I don't really know what to trust and what to believe because his dad yeah. was trying to tell me bad stuff about how Wayne was and like when he was coming to live with me and stuff. He was like, You gotta watch out for this, 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 this. But Wayne was pretty laid back when he lived with me. He ain't never really come outside the house. And I guess because of the targeted um situation, he never really came out the house. He was all right with yeah. me. Yeah, he man, that's my dude, man. We had great conversations, like for like hours, like two or three hours at a time. We talk about everything. Uh, I was supposed to go mm -hmm. see him, come down up there and go see him once I got my car fixed, and we was gonna do a right. video together, right. man. But then that happened to him. So, well, uh, right now, um, I'm trying to do a memorial T-shirt. I'm trying. To, I got you know, strength in God. She's trying to help me with this uh, T-shirt with the fringes with Wayne uh, with Wayne's uh, shirt, kind of like this shirt. Uh huh. But a memorial shirt for him, and I, and nobody's getting in touch with me to send a picture of him to me. And then so you know what's crazy though, right? Because I don't have any pictures of him, and I was trying to get because I know when he came to live with me, he um took pictures of him and my kids and us together. This was like on his old pictures on one of his old channels, and it said family time. But I can't get into that page. I can't find it. I don't know where it's at because I wanted to get a t-shirt made because those are the only pictures I have of me and my brother. And he got he's with my kids. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, man. Um, I probably just gonna have to uh probably just have to screenshot something. I, I got a I got a one picture that he sent me. Facebook page got a lot of pictures up there. Was is this Wayne Daniels? Um, I think Facebook. it is Wayne Daniels. If you get on my page, I think that it's still up there. I think it is Wayne Daniels, but it's a, like a picture with like some horses or something. It's some kind of like mystical looking picture, but he is okay. my friend on Facebook, and it's got a lot of old pictures up there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm going to definitely hop on there because I want to get that. I'm supposed to have Ben had that made. Um, yeah, and then yeah. I know he got kids too, so I want to start. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm going to just go ahead and start a GoFundMe, but you the sister, so I mean... It's up to you. Yeah, that's what we were trying to do. And me and my sister Felicia, we were trying to do a, a memorial because, you know, we didn't really want to have to cremate him, but I'm not in a situation where I can financially, you know, so, but it's people that was yeah, willing to help. But to if they already done it, there's nothing I can do. But we can do a yeah. memorial for him, like with pictures yeah. and stuff. But, you know, his daughters live, yeah. one of them live here, yeah. and then the other one live, I think, in Indiana or something like that. Yeah, and I think that he has other kids, yeah. but I'm not sure. Like I said, we didn't even get to get to know each other like that. <laughs> yeah, he knew yeah. I'm my business. I ain't know none of his hardly. Yeah, man. I, well, I know he's with the Most High. I know he's at peace. 
Uh, that I mean, I know, I know for a fact that he kept the commandments the best he could. I yeah, know he repented. He Everybody he fell repented. short. Yeah, we 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 all are imperfect. Ain't nobody perfect on this earth. Right, but and he, he was, was he was definitely that. trying. He was teaching me a little bit. He was teaching me a little bit about the graven images and all. He was teaching me a little bit, and I I was kind of saying I always used to tell him like I would never pop up too much, but I would pop up like, bro, you know, you could come back and live with me. I love you. It's on a lot of his pages, and that's why a lot of people's like, well, where was y'all at? I wouldn't comment a lot, but I would come up and I would look for him. Like, you know, you could come. I love you. You can come back and stay if you need to. But he never came. He said he was coming. He never came. Man, 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 man. Oh, man. Yeah. That's that's just that's the craziest thing that I've experienced all year. I mean, I've never just been cool. We were just talking. I just had sent him some money through uh, Walmart like the week before it happened. And, man, you know, just... I still haven't heard back if he had coronavirus. I still haven't heard. I don't know if that's the cause of So the, you, you hadn't talked to the medical examiner? No, I did not. I tried to speak to his dad about it. And his dad was just like, he haven't heard anything. I'm like, well, somebody had to heard, heard something by now. Yeah, they got to have some results. And it's public record as well, too. Right. Uh, so maybe I'll just call the detective tomorrow. Because I do have the detective's number that um handled the case and stuff. Okay, yeah. Yeah, definitely do that because uh, keep keep me posted. I want to know what happened to my friend because you know he was a targeted individual, and it exactly. look it's looking real suspicious. It, I ain't gonna be, I'm gonna be real honest. It's not looking like it's like natural causes and all that. It's looking like it was intentional. Somebody made him sick or got him sick intentionally or something. To me, and that's just my exactly. opinion. You know, that's crazy, man. Uh, but but for real, definitely. Um, if you have a GoFundMe link that you want to share in the chat. You can go ahead and put that GoFundMe link up so I can uh, copy it. And then I'll start definitely putting those on my videos and stuff so that people will have an opportunity to donate to uh, Wayne Daniels uh, Memorial uh, Fund for him. Uh, definitely. He, he got left two daughters behind, you know. Um, and it's just really sad that nobody and everybody's want to know what happened. What happened? Why did he die? What happened? Nothing. Nobody is saying nothing. So I'm glad you reached out for real. Definitely. I don't know if you did your did your camera look like the camera may have froze up. Is the camera good here? OK, look like she backed out, y'all. So. She probably come back on. Put the link back up in case you want to come back on. But that's that's crazy, man. That's crazy. That is crazy. That's what everybody wants to know. Um, to be honest, uh, I'm a I'm gonna go ahead and call down there myself tomorrow and uh, find out what's going on. Uh, because uh his death certificate is a uh, record. They didn't cremated him, and so I don't know I don't know what's going on. But we definitely, but every person that has an autopsy and goes to the medical examiner office must have a cause of death. Uh, what happened to him? You know what I mean? So for them not to, for his own sister not to know, it's weird. Let me put this link back up in case anybody else wants to get on. Uh, let me see. That's weird, man. That's crazy, man. We got to get, I got to get this shirt. We got to get this shirt made. Um, definitely, y'all. So I'm going to put the GoFundMe up for Wayne's Memorial and also uh, be making the T-shirt. All the uh, proceeds will go to his daughters, to his family. Um, we got we to gotta get to the bottom of what happened to our friend Wayne Daniels. Uh, but we just can't just because these perps and it's like it seems like it's people involved that it's, it seems like some purpose activity going on with this situation doesn't mean that. We shouldn't mourn our friend and give him a good send off. You know what I mean? So uh, I got the link. She just gave me the info I need to get a picture of him. Um, and we'll start creating that uh, this uh, T-shirt with the fringes on. And uh, and it'll be you'll be able to just purchase it. And then all the money will go to uh, Wayne's kids and his uh, memorial fund. So here we got somebody else. Waking Warrior. Waking Warriors in the chat. Let's see. I don't know, I don't know who that is. Let's see. Let's see. Waking Warrior. What 
What's up? How you doing? What up? Shalom. All right, guess you're in. All right. Guess he wasn't talking. But anyway, the link is shared. Oh, your phone died. You good. You good. We're still on here. So we'll, um, if one of the moderators would put the link back up, I don't know if y'all got it or not. Or I can, I can do it real quick. Because I got a couple more questions I want to ask before you got off of there. That's my friend, man. That's crazy, man. To have your friend, like your target, like even though we never met each other, like we all the way across country, man, that's my friend, man. He's like, man, and he, you know, when, when we did the fundraiser for him, he was just like, man, no one's ever did that for me. And it really touched my heart, man, to just give him, to, to let him feel so much love from all of us. You know what I mean? All of us had showed him love for that, man. And before he passed away, he felt some 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 strong love from, from the CI community, from us as friends all the way across this world. And, you know, as being a target individual, you know we isolated. We don't be having friends like that. And for us to have somebody willing, you know what I'm saying, to, you know, just listen to our problems and listen to what we're going through and actually believe us instead of thinking we crazy. You know what I mean? That that means the world to me. You know, I don't know how y'all feel about it, but it means the world to me. See who else is uh see who's in the back. Let's see who's on here. All right. So uh yeah, real so real, if you want to come on, you can come on. Uh the link is down there. It's, uh, it's right here. Let me just click the link in the chat thread. Yeah, it's my friend, man. We're supposed to do a video and everything together. That's my ass. I was going to do it. I was going to go uh, to Fayetteville for for like a little end of the summer, a little vacation. And we're going to do a video together. Okay. Yeah, yeah, welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you. Yeah, my phone died. Looks like it's the same Yeah, y'all, you're fine. You're um, fine. You can get another one. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, boo. I'm going to come back because you're nice. Thank yeah, you. Rest in peace, man. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah but he, Wayne, Wayne Daniels, I want to let you know, um, Wayne Daniels was loved, uh, truly loved in the target individual community. Uh, he was loved by me. Um, he was loved by lots of people. You know what I'm saying? Lots of people respected him. Lots of people loved him. And he he was a very he was very strong. He's a very strong person. You know what I mean? He wasn't it wasn't nothing weak about him. He was very uh and he and he stood and he stood for the righteousness. And I always remember him for that. Always. Kind of can right. you hear me? So Yes, so, I got uh, you. I'm listening. Yeah, so you know, whenever before you uh get off of here, just uh or you can hit me up on Messenger or whatever. Just let me get the link okay. uh, so we can put that up. So if anybody wants to donate to the uh to his memorial, um, then we'll be able to do so um out of the kindness of our hearts. So because we I wanted a chance to do it, but I didn't I didn't know what was going on. Yeah. Right, and I still don't know what's going on. It's like a bits and pieces, like I can only Oh, yeah. Like I don't know because his dad is only giving me limited information because he's like he don't know, but somebody has to know. And his aunts and right. them, they not really saying nothing too much. So I don't know. Man, it's crazy. It feels yeah. weird to me too. Some well, things was, weird a, to me, but but what I'm gonna say is a lot of people have said that on his first channel that uh some of his family members was gang stalking him. It was a part of his torture and targeting. You know what I mean? A lot of right. uh, on his uh, first channel, he was talking about that a lot. Like it's uh, like his, I believe he's talking about his dad. Uh, I think he went to go mm -hmm. stay with his sister or something <laughs> like that. I think he was talking right. about me, but I was, <laughs> yeah, because I, I think he made a, a video about me, and I got on him like that. Like, Wayne, you really made a video about me. <laughs> I'm not gang stalking oh, you, bro. Okay. I love you. But um, okay. it, it, but it's not just started like it's not just started. People used to say like when like I said we was adopted, and the way I found out that I had a brother named Wayne 
was the adopted lady, the person that adopted me told me, well, yeah, you got a brother outside of Mark, but he's sick. He's sick. He's not well. But I never knew what that meant. But my older brother, Mark, he knew who Wayne was because, you know, he's older than me. So he remembers a little bit more than I remember as a kid. And he remember mm -hmm. living with Wayne. He would always tell me, like, our brother's not crazy. Our brother's not crazy. So, yeah. No, nah, he didn't seem crazy at all. I didn't know all, who he, he was until 2010. That's crazy, oh, okay. right? Okay. But that's the first thing they want to say about us targets and individuals. They want to say we're schizophrenic and crazy when this is actually real and it's actually really happening to you, to people. Uh, so all of us people all saying the same thing. I mean, come on now. Everybody ain't crazy. You yeah. feel me? So I appreciate you even waking up and knowing the truth about uh, targeting an individual program and what's going on right. with the gang you know stalking across this country. Go ahead. I can't, I can barely hear you. Out. Right. Um, cause you know, cause I had a little boy, I used to stay on tobacco road and this little boy, he was like, probably like seven. He, um, he was probably. Uh, your phone, your phone's cutting out. Your phone's cutting out. I can't, I can't hear you. Your phone's cutting out. Can you, is it on mute or is it? I suck at this. Ah, uh, there you go. It was, it was. <laughs> <laughs> it You're was good. oh okay okay go ahead but yeah You're it good. was this little boy he was like um yeah. he was like i have outer body experiences and he was seven then so you know for something like that to happen to a seven-year-old it's not unnatural to for somebody to feel like they're being gang stalked or somebody's out because the more knowledge you know they are going to kill you they are going i truly believe that i be believe it i believe it to the fullest extent, the more you know, because this government is ran, I feel like personally, I feel like this government is not even ran by the president of the United States. Like when Barack Obama won president, black people was just so excited. Oh, we got black first black president. We done. We got it. We got it. No, baby, they set that up for him to win so that mm -hmm. anything that was bad, anything that might have happened, that be the blame because they made it so that he could win. Right, he didn't right. win that. He He didn't win that to me. I don't feel like he won that election fair and square. It was set up for our future fall, whatever that might be. I don't know. I'm watching and I'm waiting. Yeah, you. Yeah, you right. You you on the right track. You on the right track as far as like the knowing the 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 knowledge that that some of us targeted individuals know. Like we we know a lot what's going on with the secret societies, what's ha happening behind closed doors. And you know, a lot of right. us are we, we're empowered individuals, man. We we got our lights are as soon as we walk in the door, our lights shine. We already know, like, wow, who is that? You know what I mean? And people just gravitate to us. Even negative, negative right, people right. try to come with BS around us because we just saw it's just something about us. This, this, like, but, but Wayne had his light was shine. He was his light was shine, man. He he made me smile. He made and my smile. brother. He always say, "What you say?" I can't hear you. Right. I think and he would always tell again. me, like, okay, sis, I'm going to put you on. I'm going to tell you. Girl. He would always be like, sis, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. Yeah. He was like, I'm going to I'm gonna let you know some stuff. And I don't know where he was going to let me know, but he didn't get the chance to tell me. Wow. Yeah. Man, man, man. that That's deep, man. But, man, it's all right, though. Uh, it's just a, if, it's a lot of people that's trying to figure out what happened to our friend. And I know with us in numbers. We can get something to get some type of uh, a resolution Answers. to this situation. Yeah, we need some resolution to this situation because I'm sitting over here, and I, I wouldn't say I'm feeling guilty, but I I, I want to make sure I do something for my friend. You know what I mean? In his memory, right. and, and it's like right. it's like they ain't nobody saying nothing. Like it's like I can't just right. come to North Carolina. Like so. I'm going to have to, you know what I mean, push push a little harder. Like, I'm just get on the phone and start calling people. But right. you would think that, uh, hope, hopefully, if you talk to his father, I'm going to try to call him again. Um, tell him to get in touch with me. He has my number in Wayne's phone. So if you ever right. talk to him. Right. And um, like I was saying, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get through to him because it's like a he's like going in circles when I'm talking to him. It's like he don't know and he's not sure. And then he's confused, just like I'm confused. And I'm just like. Look, somebody got to know something because it's been over a month now 
It doesn't take that long for toxicology. Well, well I got some. I got I some information you might want to hear. <laughs> What'd you say? Or they, and I feel like they just cremated him without telling us. Or did they even cremate him? Like, because from my understanding, nobody seen Wayne's body. Nobody seen Wayne's body out of his family. They was like they didn't need nobody to identify him because they knew it was him. That's what the detective told me. I'm like, okay. What? But yeah, that's what the detective told me. He was like, they knew for a fact that it was him. They didn't need anybody to identify his body. But then I asked him, I said, well, my brother survived in New York. He traveled all around the world, never got sick, never, you know, no harm never came to him. You know what I'm saying? He survived not living in a hotel or he survived living on mm -hmm. the streets. Oh, so, the winners. And you're going to tell me the coronavirus took him out? Mm, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because so, yeah. he's just uh -huh. he's not gonna survive that much hardship for the smallest thing to take you out. Not saying that coronavirus is small because it may be big, but I know he's a bigger fighter than that. And he didn't appear to be sick in his last video either. Mm. Like he sounded like he had sinus problems. Like his sinuses were messed up, but you know, sleeping under a fan and a if you take a shower and go in the AC, you are gonna be sick next day. Right. Um, to me, oh no, to me, he sounded like he was congested a little bit, but I didn't think that he was about to die on me. You know, I thought he had a little cold or something, but I didn't think he was about to die. You know, and and it's right, crazy, exactly. Man. Something ain't something. His, he need, right. his, his death his needs to be investigated. Explained it to me because the way his aunt and them explained it, yeah, and the way his aunt and them explained it, they was like, oh, they seen him and he was just had a bad cough and was just sweating so bad. But like in his broadcast, he didn't cough not one time. Like, you know, a bad cough, you're going to be coughing constantly. Like, like it, you ain't going to be able to talk because you got a bad cough. You're just going to be coughing. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know, yeah, but somebody yeah. needs to figure something out. I'm gonna call his dad tomorrow. Definitely. All right. Well, you know, if uh, let's see if anybody in here got Maybe any I questions. Wonder what I'm got questions. I work at a convenience store. That's why I keep looking around. Got to make sure they ain't trying to take these sweet <laughs> <laughs> Man, look, this is crazy. Uh, I mean. Rest in peace to Wayne Daniels. Oh, that T-shirt will be up. We'll be, we'll, we'll be having a T-shirt real soon for him. Uh, hopefully uh, that you will want yeah, one, I too. Yeah, I think so, too. Say, Willie. Mm -hmm. That's, I'm, man, I'm kind of upset. I'm, like, I'm kind of I'm upset a little bit because, like, I'm, I'm, it's kind of making me upset that somebody may have possibly murdered my friend. You know what I mean? Instead of natural causes, somebody probably deliberately murdered my friend. Like, yes. It, it's making me mad like not mad like i'm you know it was just like i don't uh, know man i love you guys i, I gotta get back to you. all right thank you for t thank you i can't i can't hear you though right and you know the detective i can't hear you and you know the detective he never really all right. The detective never went in the room. He never went in the room. When they went to the hotel where they supposedly found Wayne, they never went in the room. They he never the detective said he never went in the room. So how do you know somebody didn't clean it up? Wow. Wow. Now we didn't got we now we're getting down to the nitty gritty, so uh, some calls need to be made, man, for Wayne. Uh, something is something definitely ain't right. But uh, hopefully she'll leave. Well, I'll get in touch with her and get the GoFundMe link for Wayne and his children. We'll start uh, a memorial t-shirts for him. Possibly this week we'll have them. Um, but uh, I'll pray to the Most High, man. I'm just we. I just gotta, you know, gather myself. It's kind of upsetting when you truly love somebody, man. That's, that's my friend, man. Like to hear it, to hear the truth about what's really going on, you know. Because I've been in the dark for about two weeks now, or whatever, and it's like that's crazy, man. 
And, you know, I know in the back of some of y'all mind, uh, if you're targeting an individual, you know, you, you gotta be, we gotta be careful who we trust. Um, we gotta be real careful, you guys, you know, um, we don't want, we don't want that to happen to us. And, you know, I'm sorry to say, sad to say that I, I don't want that to happen to me. If something happens to me, I want somebody to know what happened. All right, definitely, Rail. We'll be in touch with you. Um, let me see. If y'all wanna, if y'all have any questions, um, I can always hit her up on Facebook. Uh, you can hit her up on Facebook and uh, ask her some questions about what happened. Man, that's kind of crazy, man. That's the only family member I've been able to get in contact about with Wayne. Uh, I had his cousins, his other cousins' number, but you know, everybody was saying like on his first channel. All his family was involved. Some of his family was involved in this stalking. So at that point, I didn't know who to trust. But yeah, you guys, like, excuse, excuse me real quick. Excuse me. We, we got to, we definitely got to, like, you know what I mean, be mindful. You know what I mean? Because, like, we got to learn from other people's mistakes that, that, that they make so that we won't make those mistakes in the future. You know what I mean? So she said, uh, got to understand that when you trust someone, you literally are trusting them with your life. Words of wisdom from Phenomenal Mommy. Those are great words. Trusting them with your life, man. That's real. And if you look at it like that, you'll be fine. So that's a, that's a, that's definitely, actually, that's pretty, that's decent. I like that. Words of wisdom. I'm gonna use that for my own life because you know, as as I talked about in my last live, what I was going through. But we're here for everybody. Uh, anybody else that wants to get on the live, uh, perps aren't allowed on the live. You can actually exit stage left if you a perp. You're not allowed on the uh, on this channel. I don't know how they're doing on other channels. Perps ain't allowed here. But if you're a true targeting individual, you want to share your story. I'm gonna put the link up in the uh, comments. Uh, all you got to do is click it. You can go on your web browser if you're on your cell phone, and uh, you can get on here, and I'll uh, bring you in. Uh, let's see. I think, uh, I think Power, Powerful is supposed to come on tonight. I don't know if you're still watching, but uh, I'll put the link back up real quick, uh, see if he'll come on. Uh, we can also, let's see. Excuse me. Oh, boy. I mean, because like, because like, man, I'm like, what you mean? Which <laughs> the detective didn't even go in the room. Nobody identified his body. What do you so? So so basically he his death wasn't in, investigated correctly. You know what I mean? So you'd already know what it's pointing to. It's, it's pointing that somebody may have killed him and they're covering it up. You know, and that's that's really making me like it's really like so. Don't trust nobody, you guys. And and if you do trust them, make sure that that person is not going is not no perp. And you'd be better off probably just being a solo roller solo dolo. You know what I mean? Uh, ride this thing out and do it to the end. See, uh, more than Congress said, uh, the Santanic Elite is on a mission to inject everyone with demon DNA, aka nanotechnology, dark matter. Definitely believe that, bro. Um. I believe us as targeted individuals, I, as some of us, I'm probably most of us, are some, at some point, some type of guinea pig, some type of test, like test dummy or or whatever, test subject for for the five G towers, the remote neural monitoring, the direct energy weapons, the nanotech. I believe all that. That's one hundred, definitely. Yeah, but you know. Uh, tonight, tonight we just sharing our stories, our uh, testimonies. What I do when I hear somebody else's story is I I try to learn from them. You know what I mean? What they're going through, uh, like April's uh, particular situation. I had shared my story earlier, like probably two or three weeks ago, probably even a month ago. And I don't know, you know, if my story by me sharing it helped her in her particular situation when they came on her. But the most high had her and she knew what to do in that situation. Remain calm 
you know, and try not to do nothing. We ain't running from nobody. I ain't, I ain't, you know what I'm saying? But we don't want to put ourselves in a situation to where they're going to get us put in prison or get us killed. You know, my particular situation, when, like I said, when dude pulled his gun on me um, and he had it in his armpit, if I would have pulled my knife out, that would have gave him, it would have looked like on camera, I was pulling my knife on him when he had already pulled a gun on me. Hey, you feel me? Every right to shoot and kill me. You know what I mean? And they probably filled the whole place up with perps so that can't nobody but the witnesses are going to say, oh, well, he was acting crazy. And he just pulled a knife on the man for no reason. You know what I'm saying? And that's how they do it. Synthetic crime. Set you up and all that. So, let's see. She said it did help me. And that's why, and that's exactly why we got to share our story. So, see, uh, anybody, choppy. Anybody else uh, want to get on here, bro? Let me know. Because uh, I want to hear some more. I want to hear some more testimonies myself. Uh, and then I'll uh, basically, you know, we'll close the video out. But for, for, for that. They always playing with my life. Don't nobody want to come on. But I'll be telling, I'll be saying, I'll be telling people. Uh, most most of the people, most people on my channel, like, is there's some real ones on my channel, but it's, it's mostly full of perps. They be on here getting gathering information and all that. So let's see what uh Barry said. He said these gang stalkers set people up, man. It's pathetic. My dad was set up that way, I believe. He got lung cancer. They said he had a couple months left to live. Then out of nowhere, he got in that car accident. Man, this is man, this is crazy, man. This world is wicked, man. Wicked, man. The satanic elite, man. They they so mad at the most. They mad at the most high. But you know what? They don't really realize about who they worshiping and <clears throat> who they dealing with. What they don't what they don't realize is is that that Satan don't like like them at all. Don't love you. He hates you. You made in his image. And I just don't see how they and they just bow down and worship him for for things from the earth. All right, we finally got somebody on here. All right. More than a conqueror was on there. Let's see what's on. I'm gonna bring more than a conqueror on real quick and then I'll bring you on. Strengthen y'all, you'll come on after that. And then we'll close out if anybody else wanna be on. More than a conqueror, what's up, brother? Shalom, man. Can you hear me? Shalom. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Man, just wanted to get on here and uh, say big ups to you, brother, for the work that you're doing. You're doing the work that the Most High wants you to do. And that's uh, being out here on the front line as a warrior. Where all these so-called religious folks is tucked off somewhere in a satanic, masonic camp somewhere. We out mm -hmm. here on the front line, so you know it's real. Just like yes, sir. Shalom, shalom. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. I need those words of encouragement. Uh, you know, with the gang stalking program, my target has increased at least ten thousand percent. But I don't even. It don't even seem like it. Uh, you know, I, when I get on camera, when I do videos or all that, but. Uh, my stalking is greatly increased because I'm on here spreading the truth, uh, trying to wake people up, uh, trying to get people to keep the, the commandments and keep the Sabbath. Uh, it's a lot of people that don't know the truth and to be able to spread it in a way that's not like uh, biased or try to force it on somebody, you know, just waking people up and just getting the knowledge for themselves is awesome. You know, so thank you for that, man. I appreciate the accolade. Yeah. Um it's tough, man. You know, I with with my kids, they've targeted my kids, they've targeted my family, everybody pretty much in my circle. Uh, and I think the most difficult thing that a targeted individual have to go through is the fact that you don't do it alone, but you don't do it with no human, you know, social support system that is cut out. They will target yeah. your family. 
uh, your friends, anybody that you thought you had in your corner, they're going to be gone once the targeting starts. And only the only one that's going to be in your corner is the most high. You feel me? Me and my kids, I have been going through this for quite some time. Uh, my wife was, I believe, killed by this program. And, you know, it's just it's just been nuts that with homelessness right now I'm living in my car oh, yeah. and you know, it's, it's difficult because I get one job. Um, I have several different skill trades, uh, mm-hmm. commercial driving. I've, I've done, uh, you know, carpentry, uh, automotives and pretty much everything. Uh, but it's difficult for me to keep a job because what they do is they come at your financial base. You see what mm-hmm. I'm saying? They're going to make sure you don't have any money to live off of. They're going to make sure anybody who could possibly help you uh, is threatened and told not to extend a helping hand. And that's the most difficult part for me because it's like, you know, I did a lot of work. Down south, man, folks know me. You feel me? Like, they know me, know me. Because I've been out uh, since I was a youngin. Uh, in the communities, mm-hmm. uh, doing community, you know, embedment projects and big brother programs and things of that nature. And for like the entire system to turn everyone I've helped against me, I think that was like, you know, with the knife in the back that hurt the most. Man, I know too. I know exactly how that feels, man. I know exactly how that feels. And uh, it, it, it's, it, it try to make you feel like it's no hope. Like, but you got to realize, man, too, like with you having those skills, you got to go in, you know, business for yourself. And that's what I'm realizing. You know what I mean? I got like I'm working it. Like I said, I just started that job. Child support, the month check in half, two hundred and forty six dollars for 40 hours worth of work. Ain't no way. And, I, and I'm homeless. So how can I get myself out of that situation? And so what I'm thinking is, is just going to business for myself. I can work on someone's car. Uh, I, I'm, I got skills, you know what I mean? Skill sets and different things and different avenues, but it's about us coming together, you know, and supporting each other as well. Just that little bit of support goes a long way, you know, but you can continue. I'm, I apologize. Go ahead, brother. I just wanted to add that. Nah, man, you are right in my book, uh, brother, but you're absolutely right. We need to come together. We need to have um, housing for targeted individuals. We need to have business for targeted individuals because to be honest this system have rejected us we are like the outcast of like this wicked society which is perfectly fine with me because i'd rather be on the most high side than on this wicked world side which is doomed for destruction uh so oh, yeah you know it's like uh, we need to start that the issue is it take money in order to make money so like trying to get um, micro loans, SBAs, and things of that nature uh, mm-hmm. is difficult. And I don't have bad credit, man. You know, they're trying to make my credit bad, but, you know, I've been denied uh, for business grants. But let me go up and down and say, you know, I want to take out money that's going to be on like a sports car or something. They'll give it to me. You feel me? Right. But not anything to to help you get on your feet. So, that's what we need to be praying for is like uh, direction on what the most high wants us to do in order to, you know, create a stable situation for us and those uh, that are part of this family. This, you know, I call it the elect family. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's that's exactly what I'm trying to do. Uh, that's why I'm trying to get my channel uh, monetized if I could. Uh, and try to give back, uh, and try to start something and then start my, uh, my film work and just everything on my own, you know, because me going out here to these companies, uh, especially with this child support situation, there ain't no way I'm going to ever be able to come up, uh, uh, basically thinking about the, the program, or excuse me, thinking about, all right, hold on real quick, bro. Thinking about like, you know what I'm saying? Hey, could you turn your phone down a little bit? I can hear you a little bit. All right, thank you. All right, sorry about that. No. Yeah, cool. But uh, no, nah, me, uh, I cannot uh, depend on this system no more. Uh, basically, we're set apart. 
And it's for it's it's targeting individuals that's still able to maintain jobs and maintain financial stability. I don't know how other targeted individuals make it day to day, you know, uh, but I know for a fact the number one way to do it is self-employment for for people like with skill trades and skill sets. Now, if you ain't got no skills or nothing, I don't know how you're going to do it. You're going to have to probably work your, yourself to death, working two jobs just to, you know what I mean, or whatever. But coming from the bottom, you know, you know, as you know, I've been sleeping in my car, too, for the past couple months, too. And sleeping on the streets and place to place, hotels and all that. Like I'm in a hotel right now. You know what I mean? So it, it's rough, bro. But you, we got to keep the faith. You know what I mean? We got to keep the faith and we got to come together. And people got to stop yeah. being so afraid to, to, to just, I wouldn't say trust, like she said, trust some person. But we got to stop being afraid of just trusting the most high and that these people, he's going to let you know who these people are. You know, that's being sent to you in your life. Everybody's not a bad person, you know, yeah. honey pot or, but most of the time it is, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> most of the time it is though. But yeah, that's true. But man, I'm glad you even got a car, man, because, uh, you know, I had to sleep in, I had to sleep in a tent last night, bro. And it was I pretty, saw, really, I, it was comfortable. <laughs> well, I yeah. loved it. Uh, when it when it first started, man, I didn't know what was going on. It started off with like my wife and my kids. They started complaining, you know what I mean, like about mm -hmm. you know pain in their body, hearing voices, like with the voice to school. And I had no idea this stuff existed. You feel me? Even though right. you know, like um, you know, I had connections, so um, it caught me completely off guard, and I had no idea this system viewed me as a threat. And unfortunately. Uh, I didn't know enough at the time in order to save my family. So when it was coming to me uh, and my finances was going downhill, I didn't know how to take it. You see what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. uh, uh, instead of going to the most high in prayer and getting that knowledge at that time, I was, you know, working, um, you know, two or three jobs. And it was just like trying to be on the come up kind of hustle mentality. And, um, uh, but by the time I realized what was going on, it was almost too late. You see what I'm saying? I was losing. I lost uh, my house in Chicago, moved to Louisiana, back to Louisiana, ended up losing my house in Louisiana. And I couldn't figure out what was going on. Didn't know that the Masonic hidden hand was, you know, secretly going behind my back, manipulating every, mm -hmm. like, bad event that I thought just was like a natural occurrence. And you know, yeah, yeah, you. like bad break every all the yeah. time. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, but you don't know. You know, they go, they, they do whatever it is that they do. You know what I mean? Like that uh, secret uh, white glove treatment or whatever you want to call it. And I'm not a mason or anything like that. Never have been. Never wanted to join anything that you know got that many secrets. Uh, but you know, s somehow. If you if the most high chooses you, this world is going to be against you. So I started getting closer to the most high, not realizing that he allowed me to be targeted because that's what turned me to the word. You see what I'm saying? When right. I was uh, living homeless in my car for the first time, that's when I read the, uh, those scriptures from cover to cover, you know, verbatim. And I realized how many lies and deception was out here it was just like he started opening up my mind and I was going through, you know, one Bible after the next, like writing notes and, you know, I finish one and then start on a new one. And that lasted for about two years. And the next stage was he started, you know, working with my son and my son started, you know, um, having different dreams and things of that nature. So I knew it was spiritual. Because there is the, you know, scientific, social uh, aspect of the targeting, but it's also spiritual, too. And right now, my goal is just to get so close to the father that, you know, this sis system can't defeat me, you know, and then to share what he's given me in order to give the, um, you know, methods of success and victory to those who are going through the exact same thing.
Yeah. Man, boy. Boy, my heart, man, my heart goes out to you. And, uh, man, bro, and I, I, we've been, you know, you've been a, a subscriber for a while. It's my first time actually uh, talking with you. Uh, man, you spread a lot of encouraging words, and, and I hope that I can, you know, spread encouraging words to you too, man. We got to we gotta link up. That's what exactly what me and Wayne was on, man. We was trying to link up, you know, to get over this fear of target individuals meeting each other. You know what I mean? And everyone's so afraid. But what we can we can do is help each other. And yeah. in that situation, your particular situation, I mean, my situation, it's like it, it can be it can't be nothing but the Illuminati, either Illuminati, Freemason, some secret cabal. Because the way they be doing things, you know what I mean? It's just so uh, secretive. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you said, like secretive. Like, man, it's crazy. Like, when I found out my mom turned on me, I knew it was all. At that point, I was like, it, it, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. Everybody, everybody is basically um, either, everybody is basically a compromised. You know what I'm saying? When my sister went behind my back and tried to tell my uh my girl uh that she sh that I shouldn't mess with her with him or with me or whatever, I knew it was over. I was like, this, this is crazy. So yeah. this, let's just let's rejoice. I mean, this is basically the way I look at this, and I probably said this before. This is our hell now. You know what I mean? They're having their heaven now. You know what I mean? That's why they don't want us to enjoy their their what they're going through on earth. They don't want us to have the nicest cars and the nicest house and they don't want us to have, you know what I mean, the best. You know what I mean? They want us to suffer because they know we chosen. We the chosen elect. You know, we they don't want us living comfortably. So have you uh have you you have any form of income? Uh well, I uh I was a ten ninety nine or I am a ten ninety nine um like IP or uh, independent contractor. Uh with commercial hauling and so i had a gig out of chicago because a lot of freak move out that area that ended on last friday they actually came up to my job and i don't know what they told them but you know they have the street theater you know how how it goes and so uh, they uh, ended up letting me go and i actually got that videotape because i mean the guy had the whole conversation and i knew i said this is like the eighth time this year, you know, they done sabotaged me out of a, you know, gig. So um, I went to the company and I had it recorded and I said, hey, you know, they came to you and they said ABCDFG. So he admitted that that's what happened. And it, what he told me and I'm going to be posting that video. I got to, you know what I mean? Like make it suitable for you to because okay. they're censoring the truth. But, um, you know, uh, he said, like, there is uh, corruption in America. And this is he's a foreign guy. Right. He's like from Russia or somewhere. He said there's corrupt, a lot of corruption in America, he said, but it's secret corruption. And he said mm -hmm. there's a lot of racism in America. And he said, I can't say anymore. So I said, that's that's enough, man. I said, I already knew that. But at least you was straightforward enough to actually confront me and tell me so i know mm -hmm. a couple of things it's based on racism and government corruption that's for sure man because we we had chosen we the chosen and the ones that hasn't woke up they like have you noticed that most of the gang stalkers they use is your own race like yeah. it'd be our own people doing it to us. And I'd just be looking at it like, bro, you really with these people doing this, bro? And I'd just be looking like, how how could you because they they're the weak ones. Like I look at them, every gang stalker I see, they weak. They weak to me because they probably was targeted. They probably was going through the torture, having their stuff broken into, sabotage, cars messed up, job sabotage, job mobbing, and they couldn't take it no more and they gave in. And they probably had a handler or somebody to come up to him. I had somebody come up to me uh, when I was with uh, Strength of Yah. We was together at a park. They said, "Why are you doing? Why you keep making a, uh, the the channel? You're not gonna get you're not gonna get famous off of it. You're not gonna help nobody. You know, you're not gonna make any wow. money off of it. Why do you keep doing it? Problems. I put I, bro. I would not lie to you, bro. 
He said, basically, she was saying, like, uh, save yourself. I said, why are you trying to save some other people? Save yourself. I was like, yeah, they're going to never stop. What you talking about? <laughs> you I'm, crazy? I'm that's, that's I ain't going to never stop. Would whenever you say? I see a hater, I said, whenever I see a hater, I know that's, that, that's my motivation. You see what I'm saying? Like, my haters give me motivation because they, they won't. They can't hate on nothing. They got to be hating on something. So it means I got something worth hating on, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Right, right. And and then another thing too uh, is that the devil, the devil doesn't fight people that he already got. He fight the ones he don't got. So yeah, that shows sure. you as well that you he ain't got you yet. So you keep enduring to the end. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now if you didn't have all these issues or something, you, you, then you got something to worry about. Like, hold on, ain't nobody, ain't no. I ain't getting nobody messing with me. Nobody talking bad. My money's good. Oh man, you real comfortable. You feel me? So that's how they living right now. Yeah, they comfortable. They ain't worried about nothing. Everything's good. Oh, what do you mean? Only thing I do is go stalk this dude real quick, and everything cool. Oh, okay, let's do it. They happy. And, you know? and that that's a creepy position to be in anyway, because I don't know how your targeting is but it's like if i go to a gas station if i leave from where i'm parked at right now and i hear to just any random gas station they go all flood in now you feel me now mm -hmm. and just be sitting at the gas pump they ain't gonna get out they ain't gonna get no gas you know if i get out my yeah. car and act like i'm walking in they all gonna flood in you know to yeah, I guess, yeah. make a big line you know it's just some crazy stuff i went uh to go pick up my son the other day from uh you know, his mama house and, you know, said he wanted to hang out at the park, shoot some ball or whatever. So, you know, it's difficult still being a father uh, and, you know, being targeted too. Yeah, it is. So I, I, I went, picked him up and they ended up uh, sending like this, uh, I guess this honeypot. And, you know, they all already got your script. They like, oh, he be reading them scriptures. So, Send him somebody that's going to talk about the scriptures. So you know this uh, <laughs> this chick right, she shows right. up with the free <laughs> with the Freemason. You know what I mean? Like acting like you know she lost her phone or whatever the case may be. It's the whole acting scene, right? Yeah, the but, street theater. Uh, yeah, it's a street theater. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I'm peeping the whole thing. I'm like, man, this is just horrible acting. And but you know those. Uh, weak targets, they'll do anything in order to appease their handlers. And it just so happened that, you know, while we was at the park, so I'm just, in the scriptures, I'm like, you know, if it's of the devil, these scriptures gonna run it away. So I kept talking about the scriptures so much that they wasn't getting out of me, you know, uh, what they thought they was gonna get. So they ended up getting some chick that I had probably talked to over 20 years ago, probably 20 years ago, man. Just randomly come through there. And I'm like 50 mile, miles from, you know, <laughs> the area we grew up. <laughs> Boy. That's and, insane. Man, I, I, I couldn't do nothing but laugh, man. <laughs> it was crazy. It was crazy. It was absolutely, you know, nuts. Like, they went 50 miles away, got some chick I haven't seen since I was a young teenager. And, you know, brought her about it. And I just was like, boy, there's y'all too much got in my car told my son it's time to go you know what i mean that's for sure for is. sure they start running them through and and then and then what i do is i, I look at their motive like okay why are they doing this what was their motive behind it? so if i do get with this one if i was to get with this one what would be their motive what are they trying to accomplish well we all know what they're trying to accomplish but but just to kind of read them and get an understanding of what they're trying to accomplish here too with the situation. So I kind of I kind of try. I wouldn't say I entertain a honey pot, but I'll talk to them just to get information from them. They gang stalker me. I'm gonna gang stalk them right back. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh okay, I already know. I already know you a honey pot, so I'm gonna play. Let's play this role then. You know what yeah. I mean? And, and and I mean that's just I don't know. That's just me. Some people ain't you know like on like on it like that so i wouldn't suggest well, that for everybody or nothing like that but if you you can get information from them people uh, just if you just read that. between the lines if you read between the lines you can get information from them 
yeah, I definitely do that. But see, it didn't go the way that they uh, thought it was going to go because you know, I've always kept it real, you know what I mean, from the time I popped mm-hmm. out the womb. So the chick that came, she hadn't seen me in years and years and years. But, you know, I'm, we was able to talk in a certain way where they couldn't understand what we were saying. You see what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. I just basically let her know this this lit targeting, whatever it is, this Masonic program is mm-hmm. um, is what's got this situation going. So she didn't really understand. I don't know if they paid her to come out there or what, but you know, she was like, Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, like I definitely know something is is not right with this. You know, so sometimes they'll go get folks. And they might lie to them or whatever the case may be or pay them and entice them to come there. And they do it out of curiosity. You see what I'm saying? Just playing along mm-hmm. or threatening them. I'm not sure how it, how it goes. But, you know, real recognize real. So as soon as uh, the chick rolled up and both of them were standing right there, uh, the initial gang stalker chick was standing back looking like, I wonder what he's going to do now. I'm like, man, what I'm listening to do now is just be real. Something that these gang stalkers would never be. Feel me? And they right, that's right. what they hate about us the most is that we're the real deal. You know, like Truman, the true man yeah. in the sh- of the show, like we're the true person in that show. And they just like fake crisis actors. I just see them as professional crisis actors. That's all it is. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah, definitely, man. And they and they almost it's almost like, you know, with the honey pots, it's some form of prostitution. Because oh, well, like sure. I said, I was with a honey pot and, and they went through the sexual acts and everything. And I'm like, I'm thinking it's a real I'm thinking it's a real situation and it wasn't. It was it was all fake. All fake. That's that's man. the scary part about it. And imagine how many other, you know, targeted individuals out there is going through that. You know, as we speak, they with a honey pot. Because the honey pots is not unemployed. They employed. They round the clock. They out there. And that's why I make this channel. That's why I put up this content. That's why we having this live. That's why it's important to hit that like button. If y'all haven't had a chance to hit that like button, share the content, share the stream, streams, get this word out here for somebody that it can prevent them from being with a honey pot and end up taking their life. You know what I mean? I, yeah, I feel, I feel like this, G. Uh, it, uh, it's like it's they was already prepped for it. You see what I'm saying? We all grew up. I'm not sure how it is out in your city or your town or whatever, but you know these boppers been out here before the gang stalking. At least I knew about the gang stalking. Now they get a chance to be get paid for doing what they was already doing. You know, at the club, mm-hmm. you know, bopping, and so right. you know it's like. You, they knew exactly who to go to because ain't nobody ever approached me in my life talking about, you know, you want to be a gang stalker or whatever it is that they, they do. You see what I'm saying? So they recognize who is weak in society and those are the ones they recruit. Many of them uh, are folks that I know have cases. You know what I mean? I could even name like a, mm-hmm. a couple of family members that I know is gang stalkers and I know they criminal background. You see what I'm saying? And I know they exactly. shouldn't be out here on these streets unless they gang stalking, which is exactly what they're doing. You see what I'm saying? Right. Somebody really close to me, um, you know, was gang stalking. And I saw the paper tags. I saw all the and I said, God dang, you know what I mean? Not this right. one because, you know what I mean? When it's family, it's like it's, it's kind of hard to accept. But sure enough. You know, that's exactly what it was. And I, I knew the story behind it. I said, I know pretty much how they got them. It's because, you know, uh, if they threaten you with being behind bars, some people, they going to take the take the deal. You see what I'm saying? I'm not taking no deal with Satan. If, if they want to throw me behind bars, they ain't got no reason to. But I'm going behind bars. Whatever happened, you know what I mean? It's going to happen. But I ain't never selling out. All I got Never is sleep. my soul. You see what I'm saying? All Never I sleep. got is my soul. You know, definitely. Uh, that's that. That's why they uh, they informants, man. They they basically get caught up in a crime that they did, or they got set up by another gang stalker, 
set him up. They pull him in that room. Look here, man. You got one or two options. You either get it, get with this program, or you going to go jail for like eight years, nine years, ten years. What we doing? And that's why they out there stalking. That's why they be having that look on their face, like, man, I gotta do this. I'm uh, I'm up at three o'clock in the morning. And I gotta get out here and, and and stalk. That's why they be looking mad and and they like, why couldn't I been strong like him? You know, yeah. not to be in this program. You know, and they they weak, man, spiritually weak. Yeah. They, Right up, man. Yeah, great, great conversation with you, man. You know, really good to uh, get to know you, man, and just know we share. We we both going through the same thing. There's probably multiple people on here going through the same thing at the same time, and that's what makes us strong. Strong elect, the chosen. You know, man. Y'all, man, y'all, how was shy on his way, man? He on his way. It's about to bring that sword. I can't wait. I'm gonna be smiling. It's like it's gonna be it's gonna be all hell breaking loose. I'm gonna be sitting there smiling like it's y'all turn now. All that yeah, torture. Oh yeah, look at you running. Look, run, yeah. hurry up. <laughs> yeah, man, bro. I try. Yeah, I try to yeah, go ahead, bro. No, I was saying, um, like what they do with with me a lot of times is they try to hit me with. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard of directed energy weapons. Yeah, but man, that that ain't no joke, man. They they be tearing me up with that. That well, it, it haven't been that bad ever since I prayed and I went on a fast, and okay. most I I broke it up. Uh, uh, so, but and they had gotten so bad, I didn't know what was going on. And they make uh they they do it so you go talk about it because it's like how you gonna prove it and make you sound crazy. You see what I'm saying? Like yeah. telling average people now the military folks and I got you know, connections with that, um, they know about it. So when I discuss this stuff, they already know about the EMPs, like the weapons that targeted individuals complain about what they don't know. It's the military already been had this stuff. So it ain't like, you know, crazy talk to somebody who's informed. But if you're talking to a regular civilian off the street, you know, they ain't never heard of, you know, these types of weapons and you're going to sound crazy. And they're going to play off that. They're going to mm-hmm. say that you have some sort of psychological imbalance, whatever the case may be. Uh, so I always tell folks or targeting individuals, be careful about how you communicate your situation, because the first thing that they're going to do, if they can't get a criminal charge on you, they're going to try to say you mentally unstable and try to get a psychological case against you. Right. That makes sense. You know. Exactly, bro. It's exactly the discredit, slander, smear your name up. Now you crazy. Now they're just doing everything. Anything that happened to you, you was just crazy. But yeah. uh, with direct energy weapons, uh, there's a guy. Um, it's called reverse polarity magnets. Uh, I forgot what they're called. It starts with a D. They're the strongest, one of the strongest magnets on earth. It starts with a D. I can't. Like I said, that's why I don't get my laptop. It's Neo Diamond, Neo Diamond magnets. Anyway. Uh, when they hit you with the beam, it reverses the the, uh, the waves off of you. And then also uh, the way you can prove that you're being hit with direct energy weapons is by getting an EMF uh, detector. They have apps on your phone. Um, they also have them that you can buy them on eBay as well. And it records the uh, EMF levels uh, in the area. That's how I was uh, able to know my mom was uh, hit me with direct energy weapons when I was sitting in the car. And strengthening y'all wow. can uh, attest to this. She she was sitting in the car. Why am my body so hot? Why am I inside? Why am I sweating? It's that direct energy weapon they told her to hit me with. That she that she sold out yeah. and, and said, I'm going to go ahead and do it and kill my own son. And, you know, she felt yeah. guilty the next day. It's like, you know, you need to take some vitamins, you know, make sure you take your vitamins, make sure you stay eating. I'm like, girl, you just got, you think, I don't know. I can't tell that when I'm getting hit with direct energy weapons. I know. I'm like, yeah. All right. See, see, some people they ain't gonna tell you about the program, but what they'll do is they'll give you clues. You see what I'm saying? Because I remember uh, I stopped by uh, one of the uh, stores that uh, one of my cousins, my distance cousin, work at, and out of the blue, she was like, "Cuz," she was like, "Watch your back," and I was, I looked at her, and I knew what she was talking about. She said, "They scared of you because." You, you got a head on your shoulders. She was like, if you mm-hmm. smart and you black, she said, you're a threat. She said, so always watch your back. 
And I was like, I feel you. You know what I mean? So every now and again, people that know about what's going on with you, they'll give you a clue. They can't really say nothing because they don't want to be targeted too. If that makes sense. Right, right, right. And that's why we, that's why I say spiritually weak because, uh, you know, you're supposed to stand for what's right, man. You know, it, 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 even if you don't believe in the most high, like it's a thing called morals and values and yeah. you just uh, sitting back allowing things to happen. That's why they want to be people to be conformed, to be sheep. Like they don't want you to know too much. They want you to know just enough that you need to go to work, get your stimulus check, get your income tax check, spend, 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 be a consumer, be a consumer, be a good one too, and go home. That's it. They don't want you to be digging in and trying to understand what harp is or why is the, what is this and what is that and all this, you know, like, you know, 9-11, things like 9-11 and all that type of stuff. So, but, you know, I probably, they probably been watching me for a minute because I've been awoke since 2007. I woke up to the truth. Like I woke up like the Matrix movie out of the little thing or whatever. I was like, whoa, because uh, the movie that I watched uh, was the Zeitgeist movie. I don't know if you ever watched that movie before. Uh, it's a no, documentary. It up, it's called Zeitgeist. It's like three hours long. I mean, it woke me up to the truth. It was talking about the how religion and everything was instituted, the money monetary system, what happened in 9-11, the truth. I, I mean, I, it just woke me up. And I think that's probably why I've been watching, you know. But, yeah. you know, I can't be afraid, man. I, You know, I can't be afraid to put this truth out here. Uh, and wake and wake my people up, bro. And I, it's never really, it's never even crossed my mind to stop the YouTube channel. You know what I'm saying? Never, never one time. I had people multiple times like, man, you need to stop doing that, bro. You need to stop doing that, man. Whatever, man. Uh, this other perp dude, uh, over in the 30s or whatever, where I'm out out here. Was like, man, maybe they mess with you because you keep making them YouTube videos, man. Maybe if you stop doing that, they'll leave you alone. I can't stop, man. Like, yeah. I, that's why I said uh, on one of those videos, I was like, if you could, if you could just right now, they'll, they'll stop targeting you, gang stalking you right now. Would you turn away and walk away from everybody else that's being tortured and targeted right now? And, and I said, no, I couldn't do it. I couldn't no. do it. No, man. I, I didn't. Mm -hmm, go ahead. I always say, uh, you know, as big as my heart is, it still ain't got no room for fear. And that's, you know, that's just like the motto I live by. You know, I, uh, if you are full of faith, you ain't going to have no room for fear. You see what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. it don't mean that you don't have moments where, you know, you feel uncertain or you have a, uh, uh, sensation of being afraid but you in those moments when you become brave you see what I'm saying because being brave means that you know your your faith or your love or whatever it is that's you're driving a positive motivator is bigger than that fear factor so you know it's like um, a, you know mother deer when she sees like a lion or whatever jumping on her baby she'll run over there knowing that she might be a snack too, but you know, right. her love for that little calf or whatever it is, is bigger than that factor of fear. And that's how we got to be during these times. We can't let that rule over us, you know, uh, the, uh, that concept of fear. And so I'm just yeah. thankful that I did grow up in a situation where it was gutter and you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like you just had to kind of be able to hold your own. So coming out here and being gang stuck, it, if it wasn't for like the high level, like intelligence agency and military grade stuff that they use against me, it wouldn't even be nothing. You see what I'm saying? Because I've yeah. always had haters and yeah, people stalking you around, trying to say, tell lies, rumors, slander, all, all that crazy stuff. You're always going to have haters when you are somebody. When you ain't nobody, you ain't got to worry about nobody talking about you because you ain't nothing to talk about. But if weak minded, you got it. You got it. <laughs> oh, you, easy, easy, uh, easy to impress. Yeah. Conform, conform easily. Like in school, 
like I said in my last live or something, man, in school, I did not want to pay attention to none of that. I was just like, this is boring. I went to sleep, got straight Fs. <laughs> and then, yeah, I went to, sure. then I went out to Job Corps and graduated at the same time my whole class did and had a blast. Like, I felt like I was grown. I was learning trades. You know, I had older woman as a girlfriend. You know what I mean? I was, like, grown yeah. already, like, because yeah. I, I already knew as a young child, I'm like, man, this is boring. I don't care about what happened in the Civil War. I don't care. Yeah, man, like, I you know, that. like they was teaching lies anyway. You feel me? It's like all right. the lies we done learned. We gotta like deprogram our mind from all these these lies and yeah. you know, it, it's just like they was prepping us for the great deception. Or uh, you know, and I've always been able to to catch it, so I would get kicked out of class, bro. Like, you know, like one year they'll be telling us Roses are red and violets are blue. Then we graduate and go to the next lit second or third grade, and they tell you that uh, you know blue is a primary color and violets is a secondary color. I'd be like, "What's the truth?" You see what I'm saying? For real. Like, what's yeah. the truth? You you tell me what's the truth because y'all teaching me conflicting information in this uh, school. So I feel you on that, man. You did the best thing by getting out of there before they turn you into a robot or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I never, bro, I never conformed. Like, I was in third grade, bro. I was always getting kicked out of school, OSS, ISS. I never conformed. I was always fighting. But I look, but I'm still intelligent because I still have a high reading level. I still graduated yeah. and I went to college. You know what I'm saying? So, th th they system didn't stop me from being and doing what I'm, you know, doing what I'm supposed to do. You know what I mean? It just only thing it did is suppress. Now it's suppressing me. Now the problem, which I wish I would have knew, is don't have kids with, with the wrong woman. You know, now I'm on child. I got all this child support, and it's like I'm trying to put my life back together, and it's really difficult. So, you know, as far as with the system for the system's purpose, but if I work on my own and, and you know I get out here and make money and take care of my kids the way we're supposed to, I'm gonna be fine, man. I got I got great hope for the future. Regardless of what's going on, I got I got I got gang stalked like a mug today. They was all at the library stalking, just stalking, stalking. They always sending their yeah. women in there, yeah, they, and they uh, always. It's my first stuff. time ever like fall, falling behind on my child support. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah, I'm I'm behind, man, because <clears throat> I can't keep a job. I can't keep. I can't. I haven't been uh, stable. Had a stable home since two thousand. I haven't had my own apartment since two thousand twelve. I've been living with women, like, just with women, getting in a relationship, you know, pay half the rent, the bills or whatever, you know what I mean? But I never just had mine. And that's the problem. And that's a real big problem. I never really uh, addressed it. But I've probably been getting stalked a long time because I've been having the same similar situations happening. It was just more uh, covertly back then. Now it's just out, out. They just out with it on my 33rd yeah, sure. birthday. They uh my thirty third birthday they started uh the overt on me so this Masonic that's a Masonic number it happened on March third yeah. it happened on March third two thousand eighteen and I was thirty three man see yeah. that's that's the way they do it man it's they they always use that little sick and these these people are sick I'm talking about the ones that are in positions of power folks want to think they something to glorify. Five, yeah. no, these are rapists, pedophiles, murderers, um, you know, just, I mean, the, the sickest people you could ever imagine. That's the reason why everything that they do, they do it in secrecy. You know, like the book of uh, Ephesians say, I believe chapter uh, six, around verse 11, it says, it's a shame to even speak of what the, the things that they do in secret, you know, it's disgusting. Uh, mm -hmm. They have like the Bahamian Grove and um, like the cremation of kids and all these little uh, things that they attend. And brother, once I start like digging into that and realizing what these world leaders and politicians and people in powers actually do, uh, it just blew my mind. You know, I realized why we being targeted. Ooh. Oh, you know? yeah. And you know what? If I would have knew what I knew now, I would have left this country a long time ago. I would have left when I was 18 years old. For sure. I would have left when I was 18. If I knew what I knew now, I would have left this country. 
No, not saying that it's better in any, any, any other place, but this is like one of the worst places to be. This is Babylon. You know what I'm saying? This is where the, the sun worship is all good, where gay marriage is cool and, and all yep. this and all that is everything is cool and it's not. It's not cool. Man, they, and, they sent the gang stalking <laughs> preacher. Uh, I posted it, uh, the video on my channel. Uh, they, they had, I, I was trying to leave the little truck stop or whatever. And while I was there, I was passing out. I have community one it flies. It tells everybody about the gang stalking program and stuff like that. So, you know, mm -hmm. I just be passing out these community warning flies about like how they be spreading lies, rumors and slander in order to coerce, uh, you know, the community to participate in this crime. So I'm passing it out and I get to a sister uh, who's telling me, you know, she's been going through the same thing. She didn't know what it was, but she's glad that I gave her that community warning fly. So, like, while I'm, like, talking to her, uh, they hurry up and brought a crisis acting preacher or pastor, I guess, he'd say he's from Detroit, and he promotes, I guess, same-sex marriage, and he hate women. So mm -hmm. he's, like, talking about this sister, and me being a man, of course, I step to the defense like hey hold up brother i mean first of all you're out of line and that ain't scripture so if you is a preacher i don't know what you is but you know you ain't gonna misuse my father's word to support exactly. your abomination so we went to the scripture and whenever i would get ready to like go to the actual scripture or read the actual scripture that uh, proves him wrong they're trained to cut you off. I don't know if they have a bug in their ear to tell them like what to do, but they train to cut you off because what they hate the most is the truth, man. The truth exposes them. You see what I'm saying? The truth kills them, literally, spiritually. Yeah. It kills that demonic spirit inside of them. So he kept cutting me off. So I had to end up doing a different video. And uh, like initially, he acted like he wanted to run up and and fight him like brother you might want to think twice boy, so look, have boy. a second look have a second <laughs> look brother i might be you know what i mean i might be a child of the most high but you might want a second look because if i do decide to go in on you it ain't gonna be pretty so uh, he stepped back and then i could see it. i said you know what i'm wasting my time that's one thing that they do brother they waste your time your effort your energy yeah that you could be spending progressing your life and building the kingdom of the most high. You see what I'm saying? Building to, toward your destiny. That's Satan's entire goal is to keep us from being effective. Period. Effective and, and, and then effective uh, believer in it that. You know what I mean? The less it, you might still believe, but he's still going to, you know, go to church on Sunday. Keep passing that plate around. Keep playing with the most high, fleecing the flock, whatever. Yep. So, yeah, you're right about that, man. And, you know, keeping these laws is, is not grievous. And but what they want to do is distract us at all. To, at every point, every it'd it be like the most pettiest things they want to distract us, man. It's just when yeah. they want to throw this over here, throw that over here, do this, do that. And it's like it me, me, me personally, you know, uh, the, these these gang stalkers, these perps, I don't give them nothing, bro. They ain't getting nothing for me, man. But you break that law, you step with the outside of that law, it's a whole nother story. And we're gonna holler at you. I'm gonna holler at you about that as well. Because I ain't I'm I'm a man of y'all, but look here, I ain't about to let you tread on me either. Yeah. I ain't had enough of that. I ain't had enough of that my whole entire life. Yeah, I, I you know, I'm a peaceable guy, but sometimes it seems like they just wanna try to see if it's there. So mm -hmm. um I uh, my prayer is that I never have to physically defend myself that's my yeah. prayer to my father what you think about april situation? situation i you was was you here when she uh said her situation when the guy was trying to attack her with a brick on the bus that's weak man that's real weak yeah uh, you know that's, that's, that's crazy just, that's, and, where, and then you gotta think too where was the man at that was there to even defend the woman they ain't defending women no more hey bro you out of pocket bro you need to chill ain't nobody gonna stand up and say nothing Back in so, my day, back in the nineties or whatever, a dude would have been stood up. You know what I mean? Hey, bro, what's going oh, yeah. on? Yeah, they man, they weak out here. That's what we're dealing with, man. It's just uh, 
uh, a few strong links, man, and the rest of the chain is made out of plastic. That's the way I see it. You see what I'm saying? Yes, so sir. it's it's just what it is. So I can't say, you know, I can't say the world and I ain't trying to because they, they might be doomed for hell and I ain't getting consumed by the fire trying to uh, save yeah. them. Only thing that I can do is continue to live my life and speak this truth. And if they they want it, they're going to come get it. You feel me? But if they don't, yeah. then, you know, it ain't nothing I can do about it. And it's a, it's too many people having pleasure and unrighteousness as it's written in the scriptures. I believe uh, Second Thessalonians chapter two, it says, you know, they have no love for the truth and they have their pleasure and this uh, delight and unrighteousness. So that's what we're dealing with, man. Just some weak folks, you know. Yeah. Man. It's bad, bro. It's gotten real bad, bro. It's yeah. bad all over this country, man. It's bad all over this world. It's horrible. You know, they did it. They did it slowly in increments. You know, like um, when I go back to my old neighborhood, I don't really recognize 99 percent of the faces because when I was growing up, like the real ones, like they started locking up. They started getting them on drugs to start sending them to the cemetery. You feel me? And I yeah. found myself like being like I, I got I got a shirt made. that says the last of my kind. And it's like, I only know what that means. You see what I'm saying? Like, because it ain't like no too many real ones left. So I feel like an extinct species, like the last of my kind. Because when I was coming along, it was a whole lot of guys from the block that was intellectual. They may not have been book smart, but man, mm -hmm. they, that, that have no, nothing to do with your intellectual quotient or your IQ. You see what I'm saying? And they was way smarter than I am. People were like, oh, you know, uh, you see me like a really intellectual guy i'm like no the real ones y'all killed off uh put them you know on some sort of drug charge or something else and locked them up or you sent them off to the grave you know and that's pretty much what that is so we like a uh, a remnant of a dying breed man you know that's the reason why uh we're so special in these end times is because you see what the measure up is these folks, they figures all get out. You can't trust them. Uh, they ain't in the truth and they love it. You see what I'm saying? It's only a few, a handful of men and women out here that said, I'm going to stand on this real thing and I'm going to live this real thing, even if it costs my life. You know, that's the 144,000. That's what I truly believe in my heart is this is what the scriptures was talking about. It says they that follow the lamb wherever he goes and they love not the life to the death. Speaking of the 144,000, you know, that's just what it is out of 7 billion people on this planet. It's only a handful wow. of us. That's really going to go get it. Right. You know? That's yeah. awesome, man. Yeah. But I, I'm just I love talking about the 144,000. Yeah. I'm just I get feel like I, I feel like I am. You can't, you could get, Hey man, you said you about to get off. Would you, would you say, I guess you get off. Hello? Yeah, yeah, I can hear yeah. you. That's good. Yeah, man, we got to have, it yeah, we like got to have some more conversations, man, in the future. Already, man. man. They they infiltrate my uh, my device. That's the reason why I'm fixing to get off because okay. I can see, see something going on, man. They, they hacking into it or whatever it is that they're doing. Yeah, I already know how that is, man. All right, man, thank you for uh, coming through and blessing us with that beautiful testimony, man. Shout out to More Than a Conqueror. You know what I mean? If you got a channel, man, make sure y'all like, share, and subscribe on his channel. And uh, thank you sure. for coming through, bro. Blessing us, man. Shalom. Shalom. All right, brother. Oh, yeah, man. Definitely, man. Let's see. Let's see about the game. Vicky off. All right. Love talking about the 144,000, man. Hopefully we can start, you know, getting together uh, possibly every Tuesday, Testimony Tuesday, you know, and doing this, you know, annually. Because it's good, man. It's good food to hear your brother and fellow brother and sister going through. And you know what I mean? We can, you know, say prayers, get, get knowledge, you know, and 
to me, you know, to know somebody else is going through the same thing I'm going through and experiencing this, you know what I mean, as I'm experiencing it and I'm not just alone gives me even more courage and more makes me even more braver to know that someone else is going through this too so I can too and endure to the end. It's a beautiful. So uh, I'm going to bring on, I'm about to uh, bring on Strength in Yah. Hmm. Just if you wanted to tell your uh, testimony, and then Hello. we'll go ahead and wrap. We'll go ahead and wrap it up. What's up? Not much. How's everybody doing? Yeah, we um basically, you know, just uh, if you want to share some of your experiences, uh, you know, whether it's your childhood or you know whatever you've been through past a uh, couple months, but. Um, it's just important that, you know, that you hear from all spectrums, all sides of it. it, whether you're targeted, whether you're not, well, you, maybe you're, you're target, you don't know. It's just, you know what I'm saying? So whatever you want to share with us, you know, you got the floor. I don't know if I'm targeted for sure, but I know that I have some signs of it. Um, especially like growing up, like. Especially, you know, like going to school and stuff. I was definitely bullied and jumped by people that I thought were my friends. Like they would set me up all the time. Like I had a group of girls one time. Uh, they invited me to a sleepover in an empty house, and they they all ended up jumping me. And then mm -hmm. um, I've had other incidents just like that too. Just like females that you know you think are your friends, and they turn on you out of nowhere, just set you up over like dumb stuff. I've had my identity stolen before by people that I thought was my friends and family members that turn on me, you know, they, they smile all up in your face. And then one minute you find out they talking bad about you behind your back and, you know, mm. being like snakish and relationships, definitely not good. I was with somebody for 10 years that literally was like using me for money and, drugs and stuff like that so I've been through stuff as a child but as an adult I was pretty much locked in a box like when I hit about probably about 18 19 um because I dropped out of school in the eighth grade so I, I never actually went to high school or anything like that I, I pretty much just stayed at home all the time with my family but when I hit about 18 or 19 I started uh, struggling a lot with like depression more than what I was doing as a child, just keeping myself away from people. I didn't have no friends or anything like that. And then whenever I hit 20, I started hearing voices, which mm. I thought was schizophrenia because they diagnosed me with a uh, schizoaffective disorder, which I don't really believe now that I know the stuff that I know about V2K. I used to hear voices all the time and uh, see like faces and I would literally like flip out, turn into a whole other person. It would take over my body. Stuff was like that was weird. I didn't know what it was. And that happened for seven years up until this year, this January. Um, I had my last little like hearing voices and flipping out, having to be locked up in psych wars. Cause I've been in psych wars since I was like 12, 11 years old. My, uh, my mother used to put me in uh, hospitals all the time. So I spent a lot of my time in and out of the hospital, just dealing with depression and uh, like suicide ideation and stuff like that. So I isolated myself a lot. And, um, but for some reason out of nowhere, it just stopped this year. I gave mm. myself over to Yeshua, which I knew at the time was Jesus Christ. And all of a sudden, for the last seven, almost eight months, I've heard no voices. I'll be paranoid all the time because I was like paranoid all the time. Like people watching me, people can read my thoughts. Oh my goodness, I can read other people's thoughts. Like it, it was bad. Like, it was really bad. Like, I felt like something was literally taking over my body. Like, I was possessed. So, once I figured out mm -hmm. that I wasn't hearing voices anymore, 
I was like, huh, that's kind of weird. Cause I was on medications for a long time. Like for the last seven years, I've been on antipsychotics like every single day mm -hmm. up until this, this, like, and I think it was. They, that's what they do. They want you to, they want you to be, they want to discredit. They want to make you seem like you crazy, but you ain't. Yeah. Because when I was from 12 to 20, I never took the meds. The only medications I would take were like sleeping pills and stuff like that because I was depressed. But when I started hearing the voices and they literally started like taking over my body and stuff like that, I had to take those medications because I'm like, uh, I could hurt somebody. I could hurt myself really bad because they were trying to make me kill people. Like I almost killed my mother. Um, I had bad incidents happen in the hospital where I'm like, they, they really made me feel like I had to be on these medications. Yeah, that so voice of the skull is real. Yeah, and I didn't know nothing about that. I thought I was demonically possessed. It's real. And they started telling me, oh, no, you're just schizophrenic. You're just schizophrenic. You have a chemical imbalance in your brain. I said, you'll be okay. Just take these meds. Take this shot. This shot. This shot. Every month, take this shot. All the time. They wanted me to take this damn shot. So I was taking the shot for seven years. That's a long time to be on antipsychotics. Mm -hmm. Constantly. And when I would stop taking them, all the stuff would start happening all over again. It would just start getting bad. So I really felt like I needed to be on those medications. But then this year, uh, I think it was the end of January, uh, I flipped out. And then um, it was around the time my grandmother had started uh, dying. And so uh, I flipped out, got out of the hospital. My grandmother passed away, and then I met you. And when I met mm -hmm. you, you kind of woke me up and told me, like, uh, you know, you probably shouldn't be on those medications. And then, you know, that stuff makes it worse. And then you started telling me about the word and the truth about Christianity and all that. So I kind of flipped out about that a little bit. I had a whole breakdown figuring out that the truth was not the truth. Yeah. You know, yeah. that I, it was all lies like forever. And I never like growing up, I never really read the Bible, never read the Bible at all whatsoever. And uh, I had my faith like I believed in God, but I never actually read the Bible. So I, I kind of was just like doing it on my own. And I was into some dark stuff as a child, even though I was like I had my faith. But then I felt like I was such a horrible child and a horrible like person because that's how a lot of people made it seem like was like I was just like the black sheep of the family. Like nobody wants you, you know, nobody wants anything to do with you. All my friends would use me. And now, like no, that. no, like, I don't want to. I don't want to interrupt you. I apologize. But is there anybody that's watching? Does this sound like a, a case of target being a target individual? Or what does this sound like to you? You know what I'm saying? Uh, leave a comment in the comment section because I've been talking to her about it. And I'm like, man, dude, I think you're targeted, man. I think you're this. They had you in a box. And I think you're a targeted individual. But y'all let me know what y'all think. You know what I mean? But go ahead. I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm sorry. Because uh, I just no, want you to tell great. your story. Tell your story so everybody get to know you. You good. But, um, yeah, I was, like, into, like, really dark stuff because, like, I, I didn't have nobody. Like, I, I didn't have nobody. All I did, for real, majority of the time was listen to music, read books that were, like, fiction books, nothing, like, educational, nothing like that. Because, I like, with my reading comprehension, that was kind of bad. I, I couldn't really understand a lot of stuff. So, I would read books, watch TV, stay in a box. I had no friends because all my friends would always turn on me. Like mm -hmm. always, like they we would be cool for like a long time too, and then they would just flip, and then even people that I would just meet just flip, like they would steal from me, you know, uh, try to set me up with getting me into fights or put in bad situations with like dudes and stuff. So it's like <clears throat> I just stayed to myself because I started to get like paranoid, isolation. like uh, huh? All right, so that's the isolation yeah. phase. Yeah, I definitely was uh, extremely isolated. And then I started like acting out like my anger started getting so bad. Like I would start 
destroying things at home. I would try to like leave and do horrible things with other people, just getting put in bad situations because I, I was just like, I was frustrated. I didn't have nobody to talk to. So I would start trying to figure out how to do it on my own, which was really bad at that age, you know, like being 13, 14 years old, getting out into the streets and stuff like that, which I, you know, I shouldn't have been doing. I should have been in school, but my mom let me drop out pretty much. Uh, she didn't really like you know, force me to go to school or like really put it in my head like, hey, you should probably go to school. You know, that's something that you should do so you can, you know, become right. something in your life. It was pretty much, you no, know, I was left to do whatever I wanted to do because she had a whole nother child to take care of, which was my sister. My sister had kids uh, at a young age, like 14, 15 years old. She had uh, my first nephew. So all the attention went to her. And I was just the one who get locked up in the hospital. You know, I was always the one, oh, you're depressed. You need to go into the hospital. Oh, you're breaking things at home. You need to go into the hospital. Oh, you, you don't want to go to school. You need to go to the hospital. It's like always put me in the hospital. I know, I know I'm not correct. This sounds like this sounds like a targeted individual to me. I, I mean, I'm just serious. Go ahead. That, every All that what you're talking about, it's people on here. I don't know if you can see a comment. People are agreeing. Yeah, like, I can see. They're agreeing with... uh. Yeah, I don't know, you know. And see, like, I didn't know anything about being a targeted individual or anything like that. I just thought that I was just a black sheep of the family or of of freaking life, period. You know, because it's like the things that I was going through, like, inside my head was, like, really bad because I tried to kill myself multiple times because of it. You mm -hmm. know, I would get into depressions and stuff and overdose but it seemed like every time I overdosed I never wanted to die I just didn't you know I just didn't want to deal with it no more I didn't want to be alone anymore I didn't want to have people putting their hands on me anymore in relationships I didn't want to like you know deal with my seeing my mom care so much about my sister and my nephews but not giving a crap about me the one person who's literally like screaming for help silently you know what I mean and then not having my dad around, but because he, my daddy, he got like, he got 13 kids. So I, like, sometimes I try to cut him some slack because I'm like, dang, he got hella kids. You know, he got to kind of like jump around from one person to another person to another person. But he never really had a hard time with like being there for my other siblings that were Israelite, like full blown Israelites because I'm mixed. My mom's white. My dad is black. So, but he never really had an issue with that. And then, like, that was another thing that bothered me a lot because I had all these siblings. Nobody wanted anything to do with me, but they all kept in touch and stuff like that. You know what I mean? The only person I really kept in touch with was my little sister. And then out of nowhere this year, she flipped and turned on me. She just disappeared out of nowhere. I was supposed to come visit her, and then she just disappeared. Stop messing with me. Stop screwing with me. That's what I'm saying. And, you know, I, I I hate to I hate to really you know what I mean I don't want to cut you off because we're gonna have to save this for next Tuesday's testimony Tuesday uh because we we running at two hours I'm hungry that Chipotle but your story is adding up to being a targeted individual that didn't even know all this time and that's what I you know I've thought that but I just don't want to think because I'm a target that maybe you are target. I wanted other people to hear your story and be able to hear it and be like, oh, that sounds like so similar. You know what I mean? Because if you're looking at some of these comments here, you know what I mean? This sounds similar. Uh, this sounds like similar story. It squeeze you till you're ready to pop and it slows down. Then you try another angle. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, and I've been trying to tell you that. I, I've been gang stalked, uh, well, since from what I know, 8 to 2018, but I knew it happened way before that. So yeah. with me being in this program so long and knowing what the what it is, I'm like, yeah. But I just I just wonder if uh if we never ran into each other, what would have happened? Or what was the Honestly, plan? I could say that that I was going down a real dark road. Like I was being brought to the light. But it was the wrong light. You get what I mean? It was right, that Satan. Right. Positive time. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? So I I just don't think it was looking good for me at all. So I feel like the most high brought you to me or brought me to you. I don't know how he did it, but some way, somehow we ended up meeting each other and it, it's woken me up. Like I still feel like sometimes I'm asleep because I'm in denial because I'm like, this, this can't be real. This can't be really happening to me. You know what I mean? Because I, I didn't know, like, why did I have to learn about this now? Why couldn't I learn about this a long time ago? Because it, it would have helped it's, to it, know. It, it, I didn't wake up. Uh, I was getting gang stalks from 2018 till 2020. I didn't know what it was. I just thought right. people were trying to kill me. I thought people, this group of people were out to kill me. So, yep. you know, I didn't wake up for two years. I was getting gang stalks for two years and didn't know. And I, I'm, I thank the most high that he kept me through that two years because yes. I did something crazy, you know. So you got to thank the most high. give all, all honor and praises to him for all keeping praises you throughout to the most time. High. That's for everybody. All everybody praises. watching this live right now, all praise to the most high for bringing you through, for real. He has saved I me know. so many times you don't even know. Still saving me to know. this day. I already know. I wouldn't even be here, like I say all the time. Like, I wouldn't even be here right now. Right, I'll be right. I'll be in jail or in that grave. Yeah, and that's big facts. So, both. You know, mm -hmm, I agree. Both. I thank you. I thank you for sharing your first part of your testimony. Um, and this should bring a little clarity, a little bit more clarity to you by being able to converse it. with some some of your peers, uh, people, like minded individuals, giving you giving you feedback uh, on your particular situation. Uh, this should also confirm that you are possibly a targeted individual and that you need to uh, really take it more serious than you do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, so once you go in, once you enter into a certain part of this program, you have to take it a lot more serious than what you do. So, but, um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up, man. We've been on for two hours. Thank everybody for joining my live stream today. Uh, Thanks, hopefully this. All right, Shalom. Shout out to all the moderators that stayed. Thank you so much for keeping the perps out of my chat and uh, keeping it very interesting today. We're going to do this next Tuesday. Uh, so I'm going to get started on Wayne's shirt. Uh, started on um, this other this video I'm about to drop <clears throat> as well as the, uh, the survival video I'm about to do as well. So you guys, uh, you won't probably see me for a couple of days. But I hope that you guys are blessed. I hope this video was edifying. And shalom to you guys, man. And keep the faith. Keep the faith. All right. What up, brother? I appreciate the accolades, man. Thank y'all. Like, again, uh, before y'all leave, man, make sure y'all hit that like button so it circulate through the algorithm. Uh, I'm trying to hit to that, get to that 1,000 subscriber mark. You know what I'm saying? That's all that's left. It's 1,000 subscribers. And I'll be able to do a lot more with this channel and be able to help a lot more people, uh, including you, if you're watching. You know what I mean? So uh, thanks for supporting G-Rock the Israelite. Shout out to all the real ones out there. Y'all keep your heads, man. And you know what I'm saying? And let's get to this kingdom. So next time, I'm out, y'all. Shalom, shalom, Israel. Kwam Yasharala.